ancient, hidden, forgotten. This is Harbor Town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's okay. Harbor Town is an all new I know, I know. I, I would mess it up for sure. I'm not very computer scene. literate. Unique. Hey, it works. This playable. works. Yep. Harbor Town. Well, so far it works. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. We've had. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> My internet went down the last time I was on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I've I've had that too. That that my internet was gone haywire for a bit. Those are wonderful buildings you're showing. Yep. He has a gaming basement that 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 is the dream of every gamer. <laughs> it is cool. He has more stuff in there than most game stores have. Oh, Way yeah. more. Way nice. more. Yeah. Yeah. He has thousands of miniatures, all the rule books that that from yeah, basically forever, and 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 so much like terrain buildings and props and stuff like there's shelves and shelves and shelves of, of cool stuff so yeah nice i'm jealous it's a whole basement under whole house there's a, a normal big american house the whole basement one big room full of stuff yep yeah mm -hmm. yep that was who the fantastic. heck is lord kasumba that yep so he named the channel and all that Hey. <laughs> Hi, Leonard. Welcome. Oh, cheap thrills. Hi. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah, but they're wooden pillars and they're starting to rot. <laughs> Thanks very much. Hey. <laughs> up here it's perfect yeah so how, how hot out is it out in palm desert do you have like 130 uh, 100, today 118 today so, yeah uh, we hit yeah, 120 we had, we had, on sunday yeah yeah we have 110 today so, so that that's why i realized you have to you have to have more than that than we do. So you're like 10, 10 degrees ahead of us yeah we are like 10 15 degrees uh, hotter than the other the coast at the, 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 the coast and you're usually 10 15 degrees higher than we you're in purgatory and you live in hell and then paradise <laughs> on the coast. That, that's usually how it is. <laughs> I see. Yep. Yeah, because I live halfway between the coast from, from between, like, Leonard lives twice, a oh, little more than twice this far away from the coast. I mean, it's like 30 miles or 25 miles from the coast. It's about 50 miles or so. Nice. I don't want to go to San Diego while they murder down. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say it even smells bad. But I've only been there once really taking it. As it moves. Yeah. yeah. It smells bad too. Yeah. So Len, are you doing any writing these days? What? Are you doing any writing these days? Uh well miscellaneous stuff here and there. Uh where have I been? Well, I don't know. The last formal thing was probably Gygax Bank.
some towns and, and other interesting locations. Yeah, the towns don't seem to work. It's, uh, when I try to do the individual buildings, that kind of comes up when Greg has to do it. Yeah, it's not really going to be too thrilled about trying to do what a question is asked. I, I think I have one guy on the book who is going to answer it by Tuesday. Okay, yeah. But at least there's one. Yeah. books signed and he passed them out to a few people. Oh. So it wasn't as if there was the two of them standing there and they both signed. It wasn't <laughs> that kind of deal. I was always irritated that I didn't get more Gary Gygax autographs. <laughs> I worked with the guy for 20 years and I only had three books that he signed. It makes me very unhappy. Yeah. I don't know if you can read it. Yeah. Yeah, we Here's can. Here's someone. Sure. Nice. Oh, yeah, right here. There it is. There's the signature. Yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah, I have one thing. Well, he better me. sign it. I, had, I helped edit the damn thing, so. <laughs> yeah. I know how that is. I helped, too. <laughs> Well, I have one thing signed by Gary. I have my uh, Living Greyhawk Gazetteer. I got him to sign it in 2000. Oh, nice. Also. Yeah, God, God's Demigods and Heroes. Yeah. Yeah, that was the D&D &D product. <laughs> well, well, I use it for the uh, uh, the uh, Demi-Human Gods. Okay. Because I found out that if you try to do an Egyptian God or a Viking God on, on Earth, O-E-R-T-H, it just doesn't work. It doesn't play. Sure. Because... The, <laughs> yeah. yeah. everywhere oh i think there is we have no audio i can hear you we, yeah we can hear you but uh, twitch can't hear you oh twitch can't hear you. yep yep mm -hmm. yeah. at least it isn't my fault <laughs> <laughs> it's my no, fault we, how about now yeah. can, you hear, can you hear me now Oh, we can hear everyone right. but Jay. Right. Okay, no, that's, so that's fine. So, <laughs> so they, they've heard all. That was my our fault. So, that yeah. was my fault. I uh, I thought I was all prepared, but when I put my headset on, I didn't change the Twitch mic setting in Twitch and the ah. split. I'm sorry to that from my okay. other mic. That was my fault. So okay. I'm J.K. Lord Gazumba. I have Anna Meyer co-hosting with me. Hey. I have back again, Dennis. Malden Tetro, Dennis, thank you so very much for coming on. Really appreciate Thanks part for of asking this. Me. 
how could I turn this down? No, nah, that's what I think. You know, that, that is gonna yeah. be, it's going to be such a fun discussion. And our, our one of our other regulars, he almost comes on twice a week now. Yeah. All, I mean, almost two times a week. We got Leonard on. Uh, Leonard, thank you for coming on. And, uh, and our guest tonight, right? Our main guest who we've first time on the show, Mr. James Ward. Thank you so very much for coming on. Hopefully, uh, we, we get some insight into the early days. Uh, we just want to bounce around and have a great discussion. Uh, whatever you'd like to discuss, we can talk about. But um, uh, we're already getting cheers. We're already getting subs. And we're already getting some people really excited about this. Can you – I know Leonard's done this, but can you go over how you met Gary? You met him at a bookstore, right? Is that what it's I heard? My, it's my favorite story to tell. <laughs> Let's tell yes. it. Let's hear it. Yeah. So – and the time is 1974. I just graduated from college. And every Tuesday, I would go over to Lake Geneva to the bookstore. And I would grab the new science fiction and fantasy books that came out on Tuesdays. So there I am. I'm grabbing an Elspray de Camp. I'm grabbing an Andrea Norton. I'm grabbing a Roger Zelazny. And I have seven books in my hand when I come to the end of the row. And I turn around and I look. And I see this biker dude, and he has got the exact seven books. He's got he's <laughs> wearing a blue jean jacket. He has holes in his blue jeans. He's got one of those weird chain wallets that 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 uh, bikers yeah, have. Yeah, the typical biker thing. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, you know he's, he's got a scruffy beard and scruffy hair. He looks just like a biker, <laughs> and he's got the exact same books. So we start talking, and we, we find it kind of amusing, and. Uh, and he tells me that he has a game where I can play Conan the Barbarian and fight Set. And oh man, I was hooked, <laughs> line, and sinkered. So a couple weeks later, I go over to his house. I get on his side porch, and uh, he and Brian Bloom help me roll up a wizard character, and uh, and we're playing Dungeons and Dragons. And oh my goodness, wow. it's so much fun! In the first fifteen minutes, I died. <laughs> I, I was just i was just killed oh, that's awesome <laughs> but uh okay. but that's how i met him and uh and we started playing games and uh the rest is is really history fantastic how did you get involved with tsr is it just uh, just oh natural? yeah that's that's an easy one okay so it i i start writing for gary i did metamorphosis alpha and i did um, gods, demigods, and heroes, and he really liked my stuff. And I did a bunch of articles for a strategic review, um, and then Dragon Magazine when it came. And so I told Gary, in 75, 1975, I was a teacher of English and history, and I told Gary, Gary, anytime you can afford my salary, I'm coming down and I'm working for TSR. So he calls me in 1980. And he says, Jim, how much are you making right now? <laughs> I, said, I said, I'm making $9,700 a year. He said, come on down and work for us. And so that's what I did. I came down to TSR in 1980 and, uh, and started working at the company there. I started in, uh, in sales and marketing. And, uh, and then wrote, I wrote products all the, all the 20 years I was there at TSR. Beautiful. That's wonderful. Yeah. So let's get Leonard. Leonard, you got to have a question or two. I know you probably yeah. probably got you for about an hour. So what what do you think, Leonard? Uh, yeah. what, what do you think? What, what would you like? I mean, you and Jim oh, are wow. like never crossed paths, really, but you were like both no, involved. Not, not really. No, I don't think we did. Um, I we probably met at a convention more than once. I'm probably. sure we did some Gen Con that we went to together. Yeah, it w when it was at that um, college, University of, of, uh, of Wisconsin. Parkside, Parkside, Parkside. College. Yeah, yeah. and Gary would hold court in the uh, cafeteria. Yep, and yep. And we would buy the deep fried mushrooms and beer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd belch a lot, go pee, and then go on another game. <laughs> good times, <laughs> really good times, yeah. Yeah, they were. So, uh, Gary was very good at holding court, by the way. Oh, yeah, he loved it. He just yeah, loved the attention. Yeah, 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 Nothing yeah. wrong with that. You know, he, he had lots to say. He, he was a great storyteller. On and off is the better screen. than flagellation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, did, um, 
Do you remember the name of the wizard that yet played that night that died? Well, uh, okay. <laughs> he wound up being Dramage. <laughs> oh, he, okay. He, I was he said started. He started being Bombadil backwards. I said, <laughs> what, "What should I name him?" And Gary said, "You know, I like to stick people's names, and I like to turn them backwards." And so I said, "Okay, I love Bombadil from Tolkien, so I'll be Bombadil backwards." But that that lasted about a month, and then I started inventing spells. Ah. And I said, "Jim, if you're going to invent spells, you you have to have a better wizard name than you have right now." <laughs> so I be, I became Dramage the Wizard, which is my name backwards. Which it, it's good and bad. The good part is, I, Dramage is pretty famous. He's been around a lot of different products. Mm -hmm. The bad part is, I can't use that name in a product because Hasbro owns it. I know. Yeah. Which, yeah. The, the idea of Hasbro owning my name backwards <laughs> yeah. is, is very irritating to me, but hey, too yeah. bad. Yeah. Change of all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Change of all. Yes, or, sir. Put the, put that middle initial in there somehow. Put the yeah. universal Y in there somewhere. To yeah, or, or or age or something. Yeah, wow. Well. The, the whole thing is just kind of disgusting to me. It is, and it's a shame. And I know, I know, Luke is a little frustrated, and that's why he's going in another direction too. But um, for for the amount of fans out here, we're all just we all just love the Greyhawk setting, just because it's so open and it's just it's where I've been my whole life. I know, you know, yeah, we've and, been around the Dennis in the setting for decades. Yeah. Dedicated a lot of our time to it, and it's just uh, there's a nice resurgence. Uh, and we're not doing it for Watsi or doing it for Hasbro. We're doing it for the community, just to get everyone together. And uh, sure, you sure. Know, and it's it's been yeah. a, such yeah, well, a blast. My, uh, my campaign started in one way or the other, and uh, it's been Greyhawk all along. Yes, right. yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dennis and I are both from eighty, so that's all. Yeah, both our campaigns. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I've been pitching. I've been pitching Greyhawk articles on the Facebook website fantastic fantastic what we we cool. need to we need to interlink a little bit more with uh, with what we're doing with the, our fa with the facebook communities leonard's all over i mean you don't know what 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 site leonard's going to show up on and post something for the most part right <laughs> sometimes you go to first edition sometimes you go to you know uh um uh, uh the earth abides you're all you know which is cool so leonard leonard's well, like a phantom uh, all over the place so well i just did a guy today that that's posted uh on Facebook, who is a fifth level fighter, first level uh, illusionist. And I've indicated once, or at least I explained. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, Dennis, why don't you ask a question? Yes, because I know you got something you uh, want to talk about and get that out, and that's up now. The game wizards and uh, maybe why don't oh, you okay. tell that well, story. Tell that I'll, story. It's I'll, a I'll wonderful, story. wonderful story. Well, uh, I, my campaign started in 1980. My Dragon subscription started out about the same time as well. And uh, one, of the, uh, one of the interesting things that I read way back then was that page that uh, um, Jay just put up. Um, you wrote an article. Uh, there you go. You wrote an article in, as uh, the Game Wizards article in Dragon. Was that January 88? Or sorry. Uh, yeah, it's about that. Yeah, um, I don't have a specific. I only have. I, I put on cardstock one page, so uh, it's in oh, that yeah. time frame. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was January '88, and um, the thing that really hit me and it hit a lot of people was um, with that article. That was the very first time that anybody from TSR had ever asked for fan input. On a mainstream product, oh. you you asked you asked for what people were interested in for Greyhawk Adventures. You were putting the book together, and so um, I got all excited about that. I wrote you a you. I'm obviously you're not going to remember. I wrote you a five page typewritten letter uh, with ideas that I uh, I thought I would like to see in that. And then much to my surprise about, I don't know, eight months later, um, I got, and this is one of my most valuable possessions here, got this in the mail from you uh, with a... Uh, nice. There we go, look at that. Yeah. 
Thanks See, for the I, letter. I was, a nice, I was a nice guy back then. <laughs> you, were, you were an awesome guy. Um, it's still in pristine condition, I even though I use it yep. all the time. But um, a lot of the ideas that I had in that letter ended up in the book, I'm sure only because lots of other people <laughs> probably <laughs> asked for the exact same thing. Yeah, there you uh, go. So I guess one of the questions I'd like to ask you is, well, how much fan input did you get when when you wrote that article? How many people responded to you? Okay, you so remember? I have I have a, I have a story on that, right. that that's a little bit good and a little bit bad. Uh oh. Uh -oh. So I, I I was the uh, I was was I the vice president then? I think I was just the the director of creative services. So the bosses come into my office and they say, we need a hardbound book, Jim. I said, okay, no problem. I can schedule that easily. And uh, he, I said, and I told her how the schedule worked. We had six months for design and three months for maps and, and illustrations and then a month to typeset it. Mm. He said, no, no, that won't work. And I, I said, well, what do you mean that won't work? And they told me that if I didn't get a book done in three months, <laughs> we'd have to start firing people. Well, what in the world was I supposed to do? Yeah. I said, fine. So I put out that article in Dragon Magazine about ideas and Bruce Heard put together a bunch of people to help me write the book. And we actually did get it written in three months. Wow. And, and we did get the artwork and, and everything done in that three month time. And then we typeset it in a month. So in four months, that was the last AD&D hardbound that, that we did, that the company did. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we got it out and it, it sold. The first print run was 60,000 copies. And, and we sold out in two weeks. Wow. So it was, so it was, it was a lot of ugly work. A lot of nights, a lot of weekends. <laughs> I was riding my fingers to the bone. And... Um, one of my favorite sections was the zero level characters. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, it was unique. I, I, yep. I just wish that I would have had more time to play test it. You know, it 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 had some it had some ugly little holes in it, I, but I thought it was really yeah. good work myself. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. I used that as an inspiration, but I've, honestly, I've never used that system because it was, it, like you said, it has some flaws. So I, I made yes, my yes, own version, but I always credited that article to inspire me to actually go out. Oh, and well, thank you very much. Yeah. So that's, so, and yeah. I bought 50 of, of that book because I was actually part owner of a game store. We, we oh, wow. Got, well, we got 50 of them back in, in Sweden. Well, that's great. And unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't get a royalty for that book, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. Uh, it's, it's my, go-to book for that you can't find more named magic user wizard yeah, spells it's... anywhere else specific <laughs> to greyhawk than in this book that's and very to, true and to this day um we actually have a, a specialty uh, mage class called the Greyhawk Mage, where oh. the ma mage has to do a study under one of the mages, including Leomond. So I added Leomond in there, uh, you know, so there's actually nine uh, that they have to uh, um, do a study of, and that's who they specialize in, and they can use all access to all these other spells. But oh, these wow. spells are great. I yeah. mean, this book alone is worth its weight in gold just for those spells. Oh, that's very kind of you. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my pleasure. Yeah. I mean, you know, and you can no, see my. Is, this uh, is one of my four copies. This one's getting beat up. So certainly uh, a lot of gems in there. There's some awesome locations that have yeah. since been used many times. We can talk about that later as yeah. well. Um, some interesting magic items with instant history behind them. And yeah. oh yeah, no, it's this, the different sections. Each have something to contribute to, you know, the world at large. Yeah, all, awesome all done in lightning time. Ah, oh, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> all right, so so may I ask you, who created the spells? Was it you and Rob or you and... It was, it was a combination. Okay. No, Rob didn't get in on any of that. Oh, no, okay. No. Okay. It, it was a combination, but uh, uh, they're all very, they're all great. Um, you know, uh, I love, I love the Nistel spells, Nistel's blazing beam, you know, out of Luke's diamond screen. They're just, they're, they're just, and they're, and they're themed based on the wizard themselves, which yes, makes it yeah. even more eclectic and makes it even yeah. more cool. Yeah. So. See, Gary, Gary wasn't working for TSR then, Okay. but, but I had played in his game for 30 years. So 
I, you know, I knew a lot of the stuff that Gary did. So I was able to grab those the, Gary's wizards that he made famous. And I was able to turn them into wizards that did spells. Yeah. I so, thought it turned out great. Oh, absolutely. Um, we're getting blasted with questions. Uh, and I don't want to. That's, wanna, yeah. that's uh, too bad. Let's, oh. not, let's not answer any of them. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. So, I want. Um, Oh my gosh, Nagoya Joe, you just asked something and I can't find it now. Oh, here it is. Um, have you kept up on the material post living Greyhawk Gazetteer? If you could design or advance additions to Greyhawk without Watts or Hasbro interference, would you? What would you do now? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, it's kind of an interesting side story. Um, I work with a couple of guys from California that are famous authors, um, and. They loved Greyhawk and they loved all of Gary's stuff. And so they asked me, Jim, could you make a dungeon that was like Greyhawk Dungeon? And I said, well, sure I can. That would be easy to do. And so what I've done now is I've, I've, I've started making, I have eight levels done of a dungeon that's just like Gary's with, with the two big side towers and the main castle. And, uh, and things that Gary put in his game, I've put in these dungeons. And they're, they're, they start out as third level characters and, uh, and they're, they're exploring the dungeons. We do that every Friday. And actually that is on, that is on Twitch and I'm, that is on YouTube. I am going to shout out the Twitch channel right now. And there it is, old, yeah. old, D, old school d and is the name of the channel. So yes, yes, guys, there's guys and gals. There's only like 72 followers. Let's get that over a hundred tonight. How's that sound? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So everyone throw, throw a follow over there. Old school D and D please. Well, um, anyway, it's turned out really well. I'm enjoying good. doing the game. Now I'm, I'm trying to think how in the world I can publish this product and not be sued into the stone age <laughs> by yeah. Hasbro. So, so, so real quick on this, uh, Jim, I was worried about it. I'm calling this con virtual Greyhawk con, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. But we went the route of not-for-profit fan content. So uh, that way, uh, and I sent, I sent Watsi uh, a letter saying, I'm going to do this. And uh, they said, we're going to escalate it. And then I never heard anything. So at this point, don't care. You know as what I mean? I said, I said, I said, you know, as long as you don't make money, you're yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's how we got around that. So, um, um, but, uh, yeah, you know what you can make, it says right in the fan content policy from cheers and stuff, you can make money broadcasting on like Twitch and other sources mm -hmm. from subscriptions and cheers and all that. And that's kind of a route that some of us have taken just yeah. to supplement our, our, what we're doing here. Uh, I see. You know, so there is ways or, uh, that are right in the fan content policy. And I could, I could share some of that. I know that's a little drivel for the audience, but we could talk about that afterwards or off the air sometime. Okay. So Len, Len, are you writing Greyhawk material these days? Yes. Well, bits and pieces. Uh, I did a couple of uh, town in Raddick recently, and um, another one that I I don't know where on the map it is. I don't think we placed it yet, but uh, small town, you know, 80, 90 people, but detailed. Sure, absolutely. I do them as spreadsheets now. Oh, nice. And, yeah, that, that works. <clears throat> that works reasonably well. Jim Leonard has uh, detailed out the uh, population of Reston for, for 575, 576, and 577, if you'd like that. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. It's <laughs> for the Assassin's Knot awesome. era. Uh, so, yeah, yes, he's, uh, he's done a lot of great work with that. And, uh, and uh, uh, he's invaluable to the thing. The things he's coming out with have just been fantastic lately. Yeah. They're just really, mm -hmm. really fun things for the audience to do. So hopefully, Leonard, you get some con contestants on this last one. I don't know if you've got any submissions yet, have you? I got the promise of one happening, but it hasn't. Okay. Well, you have to no, Tuesday yeah, at we six. We have to see if we can. Uh, yeah. Tuesday at six. Okay. Yep. So that, actually, well, Len, Len has always been a very talented writer. So his his mm -hmm. tiny huts in Dragon Magazine, wonderful articles. I loved reading them. Yep. Absolutely. Well, that's so, where we got Liaman's endless belaborment from. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I got quote that. And somebody asked me, well, is that yours? I said, no, that guy got short. And he said, well, why do you do that? I said, because I get paid by the word. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yes, me too. 
All right, let's, uh, uh, Dennis, why don't you throw out a question there and we'll start, uh, I got, I want to get uh, to a list of some uh, that the audience gave me ahead of time as well. And, uh, but just okay. um, Sure. Well, actually what it, it's, it doesn't relate to Greyhawk, I guess, but it's certainly something uh, that Jim did. Another, another first uh, that you're responsible for is you wrote the scenario and then the novelization of the first computer game ever produced. Oh, yeah. The Pool of Radiance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, That's okay. Uh, how, how was it? To, I guess the game was produced first, right? And then you wrote the novelization after that. You, but yes, you designed exactly. The scenario? I, used, I used the computer game to write the novel, you know, with all the encounters that were in the computer game. You yeah. put those in the novel. Yeah, it turned out great. Because oh, what happened was they were selling tons and tons of that pool of radiance computer game yeah. and it, it was rated being... very highly at the time. it was it was groundbreaking at the time it yeah. was it really was it wound up being the best selling game of the year which is which is always cool yeah. and uh <laughs> and so we did a product and that product sold very well and so we said we got to do a novel too to help the, the computer game sales and so we did a novel and that came out and, and that that bumped the computer game sales up a ton so yeah. ssi was very happy to see that we did that yeah and it was it was a fun book to write it's a trilogy um there was three of them in the series and they sold very well um but uh you know i've, I've stopped doing work for wizards of the coast and hasbro and so i doubt <laughs> if they'll ever reprint them but you know at least at least i have my copies so how did the back and forth go between you and the programmers at SSI when you were designing the scenarios? Okay, now that that's a kind of interesting little story. Awesome. So we we got SSI to come on as our computer company and we promised they promised us to come out with an unusual number of games a year. Normally one or two games is all a computer company did in a year and we made them promise to do four. Oof. And so I was the lead at TSR because I was the only manager that was that played computer games. I'd gotten on the Commodore and and uh, and I had played a lot of the games. And so I was the supervisor. And what I did was I was the felicitator. So they'd want to do something that was totally against the AD and D rules. And so I had to say no. And then <laughs> Chuck, Chuck Krogel would call me up. He was the head of the design department, and we would debate the pros and cons of what they wanted to do and so i always made sure it looked like AD and d but behind the scenes it wasn't AD and d at all <laughs> <laughs> so we just did that time and time again and all the gold box games they all sold very well i was, I was very pleased with that we got tons yeah. of royalties on that um but but unfortunately we parted ways with ssi when when another company called us up and said, "We'll give you lots more money." That's, that's was that a Atari? That's a but, but that but that when they went over to Atari? No, no, that was was a different company that started okay. with the Planescape game. Oh, yeah. wow, okay. But, but yeah. they didn't they didn't deliver like SSI did, and and their games weren't near as good as the Gold Box games. <laughs> and their uh -oh. Gold Box games were yeah. basic, but they were brilliantly basic because mm -hmm. they were so yep. much fun. Yes, so much were. fun. Yeah, I remember the one room. I think it's Pool Radiance, where the Audiogs are crap are building the 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 the, the pillars of of feces and stuff. I was like, "What the hell is this?" I was like, "Who who did this?" But, uh, yeah, I mean, just a, a insane stuff. It was just a blast. All those gold box games, even the Dragonlance ones were good. You know, yeah, uh, there yeah, was, they were that. the Eye of the Beholder one. I think I liked the best. The front, the front view, front yes. view one. Yeah. Yeah, they were yeah. all fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, so speaking of third-party companies, uh, uh, just so everyone knows what the giveaway is tonight, because we're doing a special, courtesy of Trollord Games. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some works of Jim that you may not know about, and these are two that he did for Castles and Crusades in the early 2010s, like 20 between 2011 and 2014, <laughs> I believe. Uh, uh, these works. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, Towers of Adventure, okay. I, I thought I was going to bulk these together, but I'm going to give do four drawings, four subs, and I'm going to roll on my percentile dice for subs. <laughs> I'm going to do it. We're going to do a print copy of this, and for the general drawing that you're all signed up for, we're going to do a digital copy of this, okay? Of this Towers of Adventure. Next, 
we will do also the adventure beneath and this is a series this is like four adventures if i recall correctly yes it this is one. Yes, this it is, is four adventures beneath the dome subs print copy and the drawing digital so four drawings tonight everyone at the end of the show you have to be on to claim these you gotta give jim <laughs> the respect to watch the whole show here and yeah, the poor people yes, yes <laughs> absolutely so um okay there can we, you go. can we go back to that towers of adventure sure picture? sure absolutely what would you like to discuss as soon as we go back to the towers yeah, of adventure. no problem let me uh yeah. let me get back to it and let me uh, turn the scroller off there we go all right there we go okay there we go so i ha i came up with an idea how good would it be how handy would it be for a dungeon master to be able to build a complete tower stock it with creatures stock it with traps and stock it with treasure in five minutes and That's and the it. answer is it was very popular people love the idea so what we've got with this product is the first 18 pages are tower maps yeah it's cool and all the levels are numbered and then we have 18 or so pages of creatures that are that are related to each other. So there's an orca group and there's a skeleton group, and there are creatures that you're supposed to put in the tower. And then we have a section on traps that are just fun to put in. And then we have weighted sections on treasures. So you can have little treasures, you can have medium treasures, or you can have dragon treasures that all go in the tower. So you can you can and I've done it many a time. You can actually put together a full tower in just five minutes. And that is brilliant because for the the, the lazy DM, <laughs> last second DM that you no, are not lazy, you mean busy DM. <laughs> yes, for the the busy DM, uh, now Leonard would never have it that way. <laughs> Leonard's going to detail the entire tower from every guard to the the piss boy in the in the in the tower all the way up. Right, Leonard? That's how you do it. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> Well, There's Leonard. something to be said for well-organized Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of that, Leonard? Great idea, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard, sometimes when he, uh, yes, man of... Everybody is the soul of wit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there exactly. we go. Yeah. Exactly. So It was uh, nice. The, the first year it was out, it sold 10,000 units, so I'm very proud of that. Wow. We and, should have uh, a bump. We should have a bump tonight because uh, we have people in chat saying they never, they, they didn't even know. And so I'm oh. like, well, it's available. So there you on go. The, on the Troll Lord website, they have a great sales yep. store there. Absolutely. And you so. can get that or at any convention they go to. But lately, there haven't been conventions. Yeah, unfortunately. But they I'm, are. I'm happy, I'm happy to say there's going to be a Gary Con adventure, a convention in March. That is wonderful. It is yep. really wonderful news. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I missed, I was going to go to my first one this year and I missed it, but I did, we did six shows during Virtual Gray, uh, Gary Con. It was awesome. Uh, but um, this company, Troller Games, has been so great to me and my viewers. Uh, they are sponsoring Virtual Greyhawk Con. So they're going to be doing a lot of giveaways during that as well. Oh, so, that's good. That's yeah, very they're good. one of the two, uh, them, and Re them and Reaper Miniatures are the two main sponsors of it. So what do you want to say about this one, Beneath the Dome, while we have this up? Okay, so I, I did a fun trick with this one, all right? I made a very complex four-part map. And what happens, I put it in a great big mountain. So what happens is bad guys, strange people in gray cloaks start invading the kingdom. And so low level adventures go to check it out. The king sends them. So there's the first sections that you come into in this adventure is for first through fourth level players. And they clear out the dungeon. They're super happy. And they go back to the king. Hey, we did a great job. And the king rewards them. But then six months later, bigger Batter creatures start coming out of the same mountain. Well, what's the deal, the king says. So he either sends the same group back that's higher level now, or, or he sends a new group of higher level characters, fourth through sixth level characters, to investigate the dungeon. And lo and behold, there was a secret door that they didn't find the first time around. And so that happens time and time again, four different sets of adventures that go from low level, first level characters to high 10th and 11th level characters um, in this same dungeon. So it's like a mega adventure, really. It really is a mega adventure. You could, you could have 
you can have literal game years playing the game. All right, I'm going to ask a really tough question. Uh oh. Where would you place this in Greyhawk if you could? Ooh, you know, I, I'd probably place it pretty close to the castle. There, okay. there are a bunch of hills by Greyhawk Castle. Okay. And you, you could easily throw it there. The only yeah. problem is the, the 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 seven lords of Greyhawk would never get together and hire people to go check it out. <laughs> right, right. They're really not very organized, those guys. <laughs> Excellent. Well, One of them might walk over and try to take on the whole thing by themselves. I wanted I wanted everyone to, to early on to see these and note and so that we can get a bunch of you know hits on this on their site and get it and we're gonna be giving them away so that's good to, to see uh, that uh, Jim has done some work you know uh, it wasn't that long ago for for Troller Games and I know uh, I think Chuck Cumbo was gonna try and hop on and say hello tonight in chat and we'll see if he he comes on. Uh, from Troll Lord, uh, so but th uh, thank you so very much for those descriptions of those two fantastic uh, uh, items that we have. Uh, I'm a, I'm a full service guest. Oh, it's wonderful! <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Yep. All right, Leonard, do you like deities and demigods? <laughs> the book, yeah, for the for the the the, the demi human one. Exactly. There we exactly. go. Exactly. Okay. So I asked uh, the the first line out of my mouth that Jim he, he said no to. I was wrong. And I said, "Is Corel and Lorethian yours?" And Jim said, "No." <laughs> right, Jim. But could you name some of the deities that you created from this book? I created everyone but that one. Really? <laughs> yeah. So you created okay. Groomsh. Yeah, absolutely. You created Rolethane Ralphil. Everyone but that one. Oh. You created uh, Vaprak the Destroyer. I don't remember that That's name. That's the but... ogre and trolled god. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No. Like I said, I did every single one. Gary Gary told me, I gave Gary a nice outline of what I was going to do. And Gary said, you absolutely have to do something for all the, the intelligent creatures out there. And I said, no problem. So I just... Just out of whole cloth, I just yeah. made up stuff. <laughs> so you and Lynn have a lot in common there. Yeah. No, Lynn, I did all the soul deities. Right, it's, but making deities similar. for the game system that we play now, we use all yeah. these. I use the soul deities and these deities. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, yep. in, they're lifeblood of, of the oh, of deities campaigns. in the game. So you, I well, mean, that's that just, sounds good. Yeah, that's absolutely. what's supposed to happen. I love yeah. it when a plan comes together. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you have any favorites there, Dennis? Of those deities? Oh, geez. I don't know. It's been a while since I've leafed through this one. But my my copy is one of the first printings. So oh, it has all, of the, has all of the sections. You have the cool two yep. sections, don't yep. you? There Very good. Is. My yeah. first print is downstairs. I'm not touching it. So this is a 128 yeah. that I just that, opened That's up. an ugly story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that, that maybe that's a good uh, story to to get into how yeah, good uh, the different maybe. editions of the book progressively lost different chapters. I've you know heard what? I've heard it's, bits and pieces of it. It's but. it's the only thing, pretty pretty much the only thing that makes me angry. Okay. Uh, well, every you, year, every year on Facebook, some idiot gets on there and says TSR and James L. Ward plagiarized the Cthulhu yeah. and the Elric of Manibone pantheons for deities and demigods. I've heard Couldn't those. be farther from the truth. So here's what happened. Okay, I I give Gary an outline of the different pantheons that I want to do, and the Cthulhu one and the Elric Manibone one are in there. And Gary says, Jim, there might be a legal hassle with those two pantheons, so maybe we shouldn't do them. And I said, you know, if we can possibly do it, how can we figure out a way around it? So he gave me their addresses. He gave me Arkham House's address and Moorcock's address. And so I wrote them a letter. And I said, we would love to put your text, your ideas in our Deities and Demigods book, and we will credit your novels um, which in the nice. back yeah. and they said that sounds great to us that sounds fine so i got i got letters back from both arkham house and moorcock and and moorcock has verified this by the way um and and so we put them in but at in the very same year those chiasium boys 
wanted to do an Elric role playing game right. and a Cthulhu role playing game. And licensed. So they actually got contracts after my letters, but they got contracts from Morcock and, and uh, Arkham House to do to do it. And so we came out with the book. I think we came out with it in 1980. Yep. Yeah. Huge seller. Here's my book, my copy. Yep. Sixty thousand units in the first in the first print run, and they sold out in two weeks. Huge seller. Yeah. And then we get this letter from Chaosium. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't sell that product. It was a cease and desist letter for the the Elric, the Morcock one, and the Cthulhu one. And so I, I was aghast because they they didn't have as far as I was concerned, they didn't have a legal leg to stand on. I had done my, my due diligence. I'd gotten letters from both people that said we could do it. It wasn't my fault that they gave contracts to Chaosium. And so Brian Bloom said, uh, no, no, we're going to just strip them out. And I said, Brian, you can't do that. People are going to go crazy. No, no, I don't want to go to California Get a California lawyer and take six months to win the case because he knew he'd win the case just because of the two letters that we had. And uh, and I said, Brian, this this is this is. I, I was just so frustrated. Yeah. You just have no idea how frustrated I was. And so I said, okay, fine. I will write two new sections and not charge you. We'll just put them in in place of them, and everybody will be happy to get two new sections. No, no, don't want to do that, Jim. We're just going to print the book without those two sections. So that's what they did. They printed yeah. the book without those two sections. And, and I was just, I was horrified beyond belief. And then just the thought that people think, because I'm a, I consider I've myself read a very- I've the conspiracy theories, yeah. Yeah, I consider myself a very ethical, you know, moral person. And so just the thought that people accuse me of plagiarism just cuts me right to the quake. So I, I see this on Facebook and I, and I send out, I have the standard one page that I say that tells the whole story about what happened. And, uh, and usually they shut up, but uh, sometimes they just don't believe my story. Jim, I appreciate the story 100%. Yep. Oh, Len, Len had to depart, I guess. So there you go. He yep. was tired of not being talked to. <laughs> <laughs> no, Len is, Len's good with abrupt uh the part yeah, and that's he, he okay we have, you should get time. him for about about a half hour to 40 minutes every show so uh, yeah, absolutely um all right uh one of the deities and deities and demigods is iconic really iconic loth yeah of course what yeah. was your how did you come up with loth well it was based on gary was already writing um what was the name of that module that she appeared in Queen of the Demon Red Pits. Thank you very much. Gary yeah. was already writing that. Okay. And so he told me to toss her in the book. And, and so that's what I did. Okay. So that would, so that is Loth more of a Gary than uh, another Gary than much, you? much more. I, okay. I wrote it. I wrote the stats and everything. Okay. Um, but yeah, much more. Okay. The stat writing was the most difficult thing. And the stat writing was the only thing that Gary and I argued about. Okay. I wanted I wanted okay. the head of every pantheon to have a thousand hit points, and Gary said absolutely not. Mm -hmm. They could only have four hundred at most, and so Pastor. that's what we did. Yeah. And and I, I just I didn't agree with it at all. But you know what? He was Gary Gygax. Yeah. And, and he could tell me to jump in the lake, and I would jump in the lake. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a wonderful wonderful uh, story. Just knowing that. Um, it wasn't all rosy back then either. You know, there was always, there was issues and that uh, in, in real life issues mm -hmm. that come up with any kind of proprietary uh, content. And it's a shame, but I'm telling you, if you have a 144 page deities and demigods in perfect condition now, that's like the gold standard of the old school books to have. You know, it's, it sells for crazy money. 350 yeah. is the average going price for yeah. one now. And, and I, I've seen them for $1,400. Yes, yeah. yes. 350 is an average for a first print. <laughs> yeah. Well, this, yes. this is a first print and it's in pristine condition. Yeah, it's, it's 350 minimum now. Uh, you, you have a yeah. bar of gold in your hand. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, I didn't it's... realize. I figured, yeah, some yeah. of the material is, is going for a lot on eBay these days. You can never tell, though, when you see a price on eBay, is that actually what it's going to go for? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, just silly money. The Braun box set going for $1,600. Yep. Just, just silly money. People have way too much cash, obviously. It is... Um... People love their childhood and love, I mean, you know, it's like my basement. I, I, it's, uh, it's an escape, right? It's it playing the game is, is just a, a beloved hobby, you know, something that we all truly love or we wouldn't be here in this discussion. Sure. And, uh, and that's where people connect with these, with these objects, especially that book, the Deities and Demigods book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you think of it, you think of Dungeon Master's Guide, Player's Handbook, the Monster Manuals, the Fiend Folio. Yeah, and then Arthur Kane and Monster Manual 2 came later. I mean, and the Deities and Demigods book, right? They're the they're yeah. the core books you had with AD. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, I agree. Yeah, you know, and that is that is what you know to have a complete set of them where you crack them and you still heard that crinkle a little bit <laughs> is uh is a wonderful thing, you know. So uh yeah. Um, so, have you got some online questions? Yeah, absolutely. Have? We have a bunch. And, uh, Anna, how about you? Do you want to ask something, too, while I go through yeah, these? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of interested. Were you involved in the time when, when Gary took his person, what was then his personal campaign, There's Chuck. The Greyhawk, the world of Greyhawk, and make it into a product? What was the discussion or planning and ideas and, and stuff around okay, that? Okay, so Gary was already always, always interested in cash. Mm -hmm. And he realized <laughs> very early on that... If he printed his Greyhawk material, yeah. he, he could make sweet royalties off of them. So he'd already done the work. I mean, he'd already put together yeah. um, material, so it was, wasn't hard to do. And they, they sold great. They sold amazingly well. And in fact, I, I hope someday if a certain person loses it, that Gary's dungeon will come out. Because Gary did his dungeon in 1974. And, and I saw the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And there are concepts in there that haven't even been done yet in 2020. Yeah. He designed an amazing thing for the first time when nobody else had done anything like it. So, Gary, I hope Gary's dungeon sees the light of day because it, it yeah. really is a wondrous thing. Yeah. Where, Jim, are most of your camp Greyhawk campaigns set? In oh, that's a, that's a great question. You know, I, I didn't roam around when Gary's the Gary group that I was in um, with Ernie, his son, and a couple other people, we pretty much stayed right by Greyhawk City and, and right in Greyhawk Castle. I, I played in Greyhawk Castle for 40 years. Wow. And, and not, I didn't repeat much, I'll tell you, because there's like there's 28 levels above the big levels. <laughs> so you could wander around forever. And, and what would happen is we'd clear a dungeon level and three months later, Gary will have repopulated the whole thing <laughs> with different creatures and different traps and different experiences. So that was, that was a fun part of the game. I heard you DM'd for Gary a fair amount too. Oh yeah. Poor Gary. That, that was one kind of sad thing about Gary. He never got to play a character. He usually always had to DM and, you know, be the dungeon master. And uh, and so he absolutely loved playing Metamorphosis as Alpha, my game, because he could play a character, which he was he was just an excellent player. In, in the 40 years that I played with him, I only killed killed him once really <laughs> yeah yeah he opened the door and four tons of brown fungus came out and oh my him. gosh yeah uh -oh. <laughs> but that was the only time i ever killed him he was very cautious very smart very good player and uh, and knew how to how to make a character so yeah when i played every time i would i would come home i worked in prairie de Chien as a teacher and we'd come home on the holidays and in the summer and i would go over to gary's house and i'd run a game for him and it was great fun for me because I got to run a game for Gary. And, and Gary loved it. He he was very complimentary about the whole thing. I have a follow-up question from Puppet Dad who couldn't be on tonight. All right. Here it is in relation to that. Uh, EGG always spoke highly of your Metamorphosis Alpha game and said that Morning Canyon had adventured in your Starship Warden setting. <laughs> can, you, can you tell us how he got there? 
what happened while he was there and how he got home to Greyhawk. Okay, it's a wonderful story. Awesome. A wonderful story. All right, so we're I'm I'm over Gary's house playing in his dungeon on a Thursday night, and the typical guys were there. There was Ernie was there, and and a couple other normal regular people were playing, and and so we went down into the dungeon and we explored a new part that we'd never explored before, and we found three magical doors, and we knew they were magical, so. So we tested each one because we had we had also also been in Tomb of Horrors and we knew all about the demonic skull that killed everything when you went in it. <laughs> so we, we opened it, a door and we tossed in a plant and we pulled it back. If the plant was alive, we were happy. And then we'd open the door and we tossed in a live rat and we'd pull it back. And if the rat was still alive, we were happy. So we tested all three <laughs> of these doors. And so Gary said, well, you got three new doors. To, and, and it was... It was outdoor views. When we opened the door, we could see the outdoor. We weren't seeing a dungeon. And so Gary said, which one do you want to take? And and it really probably wouldn't have mattered whichever one it would have taken. Um, because one of them led to Kong Island and that adventure. And another one went to uh, the Alice in Wonderland adventure. Oh, here we go. Isle of the Ape and Land Beyond the Magic Mirror. And yes, Thank you very much. <laughs> And the third one led to metamorphosis elf. Oh, okay. So we jumped, we, we picked a door and, and I think Gary just, no matter what we would have picked, we would have gone to metamorphosis elf. <laughs> so, so we, we tested it out. We were, weren't worried about coming back alive. So we all went in and the door slams. And then Gary says to me, Jim, do you have your metamorphosis alpha stuff in your car? I said, yeah, Gary, I do. He said, would you please bring it in for me? Well, you know, when Gary Gygax makes a request, <laughs> you, you do it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. So I go out in the car, I get the stuff, I come back in, and suddenly, I, I mean, I've been playing in, in his game for two or three years, and I always sat in the same chair. And Gary always sat at the head of the table in a, in a great big captain's chair. The captain's chair was empty. Gary was sitting in my chair and Gary had a character sheet in front of him. Nice. I said, what in the world? And Gary says, please sit down there, Jim. And so <laughs> I, very nervously, I sat in Gary's chair and he said, Jim, we're on the Starship Warden now and, and your half elf character that I know you love, the, the, the magic user fighter is, is on there with us. <laughs> and so I, I was I was terrified that my character would die on the Starship Warden. <laughs> so for two weeks we adventured. I was a referee, and they had fantasy characters on the Starship Warden walking around checking things out. And in those two weeks, we set up certain rules. The mutations automatically worked on the fantasy characters. No saving throw. And the fantasy character spells automatically worked on the Starship Warden characters. So my character had a wand of fireballs, 66. So my wand did maximum damage every single time I shot it, which was very handy. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So they, they start walking around, they start doing stuff. And then after two weeks of adventuring, nervous adventuring, where I was on, on edge all the time, because I, ha I had to do it honestly, I had to do it fairly. And so we stopped, thank goodness. But, but then for 40 years, my poor character, Ren of the Blade, was on the Starship Warden with the other fantasy characters. And so just this last year, Goodman Games said, hey, we need to do something about that. So I did, oh, did I do it for Goodman Games? No, I did it for Troll Lord Games. Um, I did an adventure where you play adventure characters going on the Starship Warden finding Ren, the elf prince, and bringing him back to the fantasy world. Wow. And that's a product that, that's coming out in November. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it is yeah. really awesome. And so, uh, I, and I've done a couple of play tests, and uh, three of them were TPKs, unfortunately. <laughs> but, but the fourth one, they brought back Ren and, and the other guys and, and saved the day. So I was very pleased. That's, uh, that's, 
Oh, man, awesome. I, I've never heard that, that story before. Or I, I know. Wow. Isn't that something? That is Gary, awesome. That Gary was a tricky fellow, I'll yeah. tell you. <laughs> there was just, a character named Ren-O the Star that was put into the city of Greyhawk. Yep. He's an yep. NPC. That's one of mine. Well, was he one of yours as well? Was there a story behind that character at all? Or uh, You know, we Gary would ask us, sometimes he really wanted to play <clears> test <throat> his, his adventures. Um, he didn't want them to go out for sale until he'd play tested them a couple times. Oh, well, smart. So, um, many times we were too high level for the adventures that he was writing. So he would <laughs> ask us to to use flunkies, you know, third, fourth, fifth level flunkies to play test the adventures. That was no problem at all. And so, so we did up a bunch of characters. I think Gary would tell us if we should use our high level characters or our low level characters, like for Tomb of Horrors, we all used our high level characters. And I did survive the Tomb of Horrors, but I didn't find the biggest, best treasure because who in the world looks in a pit for a secret door? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> True that. True that. Yeah, I mean, that, that. that is. Uh... I mean, what a what a brilliant idea Gary had. You know, again, 1975, he put a pit in a secret, or he put a, a secret door in a pit. <laughs> I've I've never seen it since. I don't know. Have any of you guys? Nope. Uh, mm, so. once, just once, once just one yeah. time. Uh, yeah, and uh, and when they opened that secret door, a bunch of undead came out. <laughs> <of it>, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where all the good treasure was that I didn't get. But I did get the I did get the the best treasure on the upper levels. Awesome. Question for you: A follow up for Metamorphosis Alpha is that where uh, Exhibition of Barrier Peaks? The idea for it came from, or is that no, no? Good, good question. Whoever asked that. <laughs> okay. um, what happened was so uh, I'd been playing with Gary in Gary's game for three months, and I really love science fiction. And I said, Gary, you absolutely have to do a science fiction version of D and D. And he looked at me and he didn't know if I could write. He didn't know how good of a writer I was. He said, Jim, I don't have time to do it, but you want to give it a try. Well, my mother did not raise a fool. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, sure, I'll give it a try. So I put together the game. To me, I think it took me about six months, maybe it took seven months. And, uh, and it turned out great. And then Gary, when he later had time, he did uh, he did a starship that was in the mountain, Expedition of the Barrier Peaks, and he did that. He said, if I would have done Metamorphosis Alpha, it would have been with this ship in my Greyhawk world. And I can understand that. He wanted to support his world. Yeah. yeah. So how that was me. How about Gamma World? Were you a yeah. contributor for that uh, for the most part? Here's Gamma World. No, I, I wrote most of it. You did write most of it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's so here's, all. here's what happened. So I, I get a real sweet royalty from Metamorphosis Alpha. Right. So sweet that Brian wasn't happy with it. <laughs> 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 wasn't happy at all. But we got, we got th literally thousands of letters saying, hey, we love Metamorphosis Alpha, but let's have a planet-based version. Got it. And so they gave me and Jake to quit the assignment. And, uh, and so we wrote up Gamma World. It sold really well. We had uh, modules that came out that also sold really well. And, uh, you know, Gamma World, I, it's way more popular than Metamorphosis Alpha because they stopped printing MA, so that way they didn't have to pay me a royalty for it. Uh, Bad guys. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, and, they, and we sold tonnage of Gamma World. Yeah, we had we had Gamma World. We played a little bit of it at some point, and, but ended up just concentrating on Greyhawk. But yeah, it was it was a fun little side venture for us for a little while. There we go. The neat thing was the crossovers between Boot Hill, Gamma World, Metamorphosis Alpha, and Greyhawk. Uh, you yeah, know, that was nice of Gary to put that in the DMG, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Merlin comes right out. You know, was, was a Boot Hill character from the mo from what I know, uh, and now a now a uh, minor deity in Greyhawk. You know, uh, just uh, mm -hmm. or a quasi deity, or, or however you want to say it. So it's it's a cool thing that uh, there was that that crossover, and then Planescape came out, and that made it. You know, I don't know. Was that was that kind of a not knockoff? to Metamorphosis Alpha? Plane oh, not scape? at all. Not no, at all. Not just at something... All. Okay, okay. Just a, a fantasy version of the planes. Okay. You know, the planes, 
the planes when we I think we put that in deities. Um, Gary did that chunk, except I'm proud to say that I did the the uh, the plane of concord and opposition. I did the neutral plane in the middle. Okay. But uh, yeah. people are fascinated by the planes and and what is on them and how they work. And so doing Planescape was just a natural thing to do. Yep. Yeah, no, I love Planescape. We still use quite a lot of Planescape. Mm -hmm. I've merged Spelljammer and Planescape <coughs> together into my oh, sure. of Greyhawk. So. Yeah. I, I skipped Sp Spelljammer, but Planescape, yes. And I love the, the sigil on top of the, the, the yeah. spire. And, and Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. That's the Lady of Pain sigil. Yeah. And Fire I had a... I had a little bit of problem with that. I was kind of I, worried. I don't use her that way, but I use uh, the layout of the city. There we go. That, there we yeah. go. Mm -hmm. I, I have uh, I have this thing that I call the angry mother rule. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not worse. want any product or any piece of art that the mom could look over the shoulder of their their RPG son and become angry at what they read or what they saw. Ah, and it really yep. it really helped our designer and editors a lot. It mm -hmm. kind of gives them a line that they couldn't cross over. Well, yeah. that was your reason for removing assassins from 2E, right? Well, you know, I, I did remove them because I felt they weren't good role-playing material. Okay. You know? Yeah. The idea of, and, and you, I, I didn't like the rules for them. I didn't like rolling percentile dice to see if the, the kill assassination yeah. was successful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I took a lot of heat. Oh my goodness. I, I printed a bunch of the, the, the nasty letters in Dragon Magazine. But <laughs> yeah. I just I just thought it, it didn't encourage role playing. And it, from the very beginning in 1974 through today, I want to encourage role playing, um, not just combat, but all the other good stuff. And so I, I wanted some, I thought assassins didn't do that. So we ripped them out. Yeah. And, we, and we won't get into the half orc because of all the controversy about orcs and drow right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a subject that let's just say you can, you're free to DM your world however you wish. And that's and yep. that's that's a good way to leave it at that. And uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, and, I, and I understand you wanting to leave it at that, but there are a ton of new players that are doing five E. Yeah, that are going to get a warped version of the game. They are. They are. Yeah. They are. Yeah. It, it's yeah. a shame. Is it a fight you that uh, that uh, you want to take? Uh, you know, uh, for me, I had an assassin. We had an assassin in our group. In Anna's group last night. There's an assassin. Really? Uh, so, yeah, yeah, but he's uh, he's a, he's he's insane. So uh, uh, unfortunately, he was ill last night. In the, uh, I've in, always in, uh, since since they were removed from Two E, and my campaign, of course, is Two E. Uh, I always took the the idea that assassin was more of a state of mind rather than a class. There we go. Nothing wrong with that. Yep. You could be an assassin that. whether you were a fighter, a rogue, yeah, or a thief, a wizard, or yeah. whatever. Thieves right make great assassins with their backstab rule. Yeah. So. But to follow follow up a little bit, maybe on Planescape, the sort of birth, the growth of Planescape started out with, I think, and maybe you can sort of describe what the thinking was in the company with originally it was kind of, I guess, almost a test product, the Tales of the Outer Planes. Um, and well, we, then, I mean, Zeb Cook put all that together. And then we, it went to the man, the original manual, the planes, and then yeah, Planescape, yeah. right? We we never had anything that played with the planes at all, and and Zeb brought in a very nice, bizarre reading of the planes and what they do. So I I thought Planescape was a great idea. We sold the collectible card game based on it, and that sold very well. <coughs> yeah, I still have some of those. Yeah, there Absolutely. we go. Absolutely. Uh, here's a question um, about, let's go back just a little bit into the timeline. Uh, if you remember this, a series of Dragon Magazine articles, you and uh, it says Leonard and, and Gary advanced the Greyhawk timeline from 576 to 579. Um, did, that, did that happen in gameplay or was that just uh, for the publishing? You know, I don't remember any of that. Okay. Okay. So, sorry. No, it was, it's okay. It was another It was question, a but... zillion years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just, I, I'm relaying. It was a question that uh, someone I understand. Asked. Yeah. yeah okay. I'm, uh, I, you know, I was astounded to figure out that I'd been doing role playing games for 46 years. So that's a long time. Yeah. And, you know, people, yeah. I, I remember, <laughs> I remember a, uh, a William Shatner skit that he did. I think he did it on, uh, on SNL where, where he, he's, he's at a convention and he's playing the Captain Kirk role. And one of these little fanboys says, Captain Kirk, you opened a safe in, in, in the Bellerathon ship. Do you remember, I remember that skit? Do you remember what the car, the combination was on the safe? <laughs> <laughs> and William Shatner looks at the kid, gets this, you know, amazed look on his face and says, who cares? <laughs> and I am constantly being bombarded with, with Jim, um, in 1982, you did a dragon article yeah. on, on ghosts and what weapons to use against them. Do you, do you remember if a mallet was one of the weapons? <laughs> you know, where does it come from? I, I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember half the stuff I did. Curious so, minds want to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So yep. I do my best. I answer what I can. It's fantastic. But, uh, how yeah. about how about uh, another? It was a great story. The uh, 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 Metamorphosis Alpha one, where uh, Gary was playing Morden Kane, and did that, um, and you had some fun with him. Uh, any uh, anything that were, st sticks out as wow, that was a cool event. Um, um, let's, I remember, I remember he was constantly being shot by lasers <laughs> and, and he, and he, he objected to it strenuously. He said, I've got magic chainmail armor on. It should reflect the lasers. <laughs> and, and I asked him point blank, Gary, if you were going to be the, the referee in this game, would you have lasers be reflected off of chainmail? And, and he had to admit that he wouldn't, <laughs> that it would affect it. So it was. I, I just remember time after time him getting shot, using up all the health potions that the whole party had brought with them <laughs> because he was constantly in the lead getting shot. But, you know, he had he had a dwarven hammer. He had a lot of great stuff. And uh, and so he was knocking down mutants like crazy. But, uh, yeah, he, he wouldn't complain too much. He wasn't happy when his character died. But, hey, that's nobody life. Nobody is. Yeah, nobody no. is. Exactly. Shoot one out there, uh, Dennis. Go for it. Um, I, I thought I caught there for a second. You, did you mention that you were a teacher at some point? Yeah, I taught for five years, history and English. So so I, I have a question then that relates to that, kind of. You and Rose Estes had an education department within yes. CSR. Yes, we Tell did. Tell me what, because I'm an educator as well. I teach at a local university here. Sure. Let let me know how because I heard I've heard virtually nothing about that aspect of TSR's. Oh, okay, I'd be happy to tell you that. So basically, um, TSR was looking for new markets to go into. We had we had just started going into the military market, and we were in lots of PXs. We had uh, we were in all the hobby stores we could possibly be in. So we were looking for new places to go, and in meetings we had seized upon the fact that. You know, if we could get <clears throat> adventures in the educational market, we would have the teachers teaching the kids how to play D&D, <laughs> which was perfect for us. Win -win. So, right. So Rose Estes, Don Snow, and myself um, were made the educational department, and we put together three adventures. One was a math adventure where if you wanted to open the door, you had to solve a math problem. If you wanted to hit a monster, you had to solve a math problem. Right. Uh, Another one was an English um, one where you had to spell things correctly. If you wanted to open the door, you had to spell the word on the door correctly. So it was a spelling deal. And then we had a grammar one. Three, so three finished modules, um, art and everything, they were ready to print. And we, we went to our salespeople. Um, in those days, we had representatives all across the United States and in England. And we went to them and said, hey, Start selling these in the schools. And all every single one of the salespeople said, no, we can't. What do you mean you can't? You're salespeople. That's what we pay you for. <laughs> and they all explained to us that the educational system 
it was a completely different sales route and they use completely different sales representatives oh. and places like Texas had five old ladies that approved or disapproved everything that went into all the Texas schools. And there wasn't a chance in the world that those five old ladies would let anybody play D and D in, in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the schools. So we had these three finish and I, I, I still have them somewhere upstairs. <laughs> I think they'd probably worth, probably worth big bucks if I ever sold them. But, uh, yeah, but, uh, so, so we just sat there and said, okay, what are we going to do? And then Ray, uh, Rose had this book called the cave of time. It was the first pick a path book by Bantam where, oh, yeah. where you'd read a page, you come to a, a, a important plot point, you know, which road do you want to take? And if you took the right road, you went to page 55. If you cook the center road, you went to page 10. And if you cook the left road by the cliffs, you went to page 64. And so Rose says, I can write these. So she started writing those and she wrote four and we put them out with Larry Elmore cover art. Unbelievable Larry Elmore cover art. He's a genius. He's still a genius. Oh yeah, oh, yeah he's fantastic. Uh, yes, he is. And uh, <laughs> I was like, uh -oh, do we... <laughs> my, my wife just asked me a question. Sure, take it. I have no idea where it is. Okay. My son will be coming in that door anytime soon. It happens oh, almost every show late night. Yeah, okay, so it's yeah. okay. okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, we wrote four books and we put them out with Random House. And they each sold 500,000 units in the first three months. 500,000 units. We said, hey, this is great. So Rose kept writing them and we got other people to write them. I wrote a couple. Um, I wrote the first Conan Pick a Path book, which was a lot of fun. And I did a Tarzan one. And I did a Wolverine pick a path book, which is lots of fun. How was licensing for those? Well, we had the Conan license um, for a role playing game, which was really kind of sad because everybody wants to play Conan. Right. Nobody wants to play anybody else. <laughs> so that, 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 yeah, that did not sell well for us, but it, but it was a very good game. Um, so the pick a, pick a path book sold really, really well. But unfortunately, towards the end, they were kind of the downfall of TSR because uh -huh. Kevin Bloom went crazy on ordering them. Our salespeople kept telling him, you know, this, this is diminishing returns. We're, oh, here we go. My wife just gave me my, let me see if I can do oh, this. There it is. The Ooh. Ring, the Sword, and the Unicorn, which is a pick a path book where uh, you play a young boy going out in the woods for the first time. And, uh, and so you, you, the first two pages, he describes how you have three different roles to take. You can take one with a unicorn at the end. You can take one with a ring at the end, or you can take one with a sword at the end. So you go through the book and you, and you keep turning pages and you have lots of fun. That's what the pick a path books do. Um, thank you wife for finding that for me. It's wonderful. <laughs> I have a wonderful wife. She's really, she's put up with a lot over these years. May I ask her name, please? Uh, Janine Ward, yes. Janine. We've been married for 40, 49 years. Wow. wow. I know, I know. It's be amazing. Soon. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what we're going to do. <laughs> I'm going to have to save up, though, that's for sure. Yeah. So anyway, they sold great. But then towards the, towards the end, our sales force said, okay, you've got a pie. And the first time you eat the pie, you've got big quarters that people want to eat and, and want to chew on. But then as, as the pie gets older, they take slimmer and slimmer pieces of the pie. And Kevin Bloom kept ordering 500,000 books. Ooh. I know. So the bad part is we had two warehouses in Burlington filled with these pick a path books that nobody was buying. You know, they'd sell 100,000, they'd sell 200,000, depending on who the author was and what the story was. But Basically, there was 300,000 300, books that nobody bought. And, and of course, we had to pay for those books. Yeah. And so that, that really kind of hit part of the debt that was TSR um, that, that led to its downfall. This, was this somewhat related to your reasons for parting company with the uh, TSR? Oh, there goes one. Because I, 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 I touched the wrong button. <laughs> yeah, we do not want to tell that story. It's way okay. too sad. I'll start crying and you don't want to yeah, see that. Okay. All right. All right. I, I withdraw. 
How about a how about a possible positive note? We had a question from the audience, and the question was: If DMs Guild ever was opened up for Greyhawk content, would oh, you yeah. would you submit uh, submit uh, modules or even though yeah. they're going to take a okay, big? Okay, so here's the deal: uh, I, I'm the high price spread. All right, when a company comes to me, they're going to pay through the nose. Okay. They're going to give me an advance, and they're going to pay through the nose for my products. And, and the reason I can get those fees is because my products always deliver great sales. So Troll Lords is a, is a great example. I did a thing called the Storyteller's Thesaurus. And for a whole year, that was their best selling product. And I've done a couple things like that. Of Gods and Monsters was my Pantheon book for Troll Lords. Mm -hmm. And that sold great. So pretty much anything I put my name to, we've got instant fans that want it because it's got my name on it but also they have great sales and continued sales. So that's why I, I charge a little bit more than normal designers do. And I always ask for pretty good advances. So yes, I would <laughs> I would be happy to do, first of all, I wouldn't do 5e. Oh. I, that's I, part I, of the problem though. Five, it, it, DM skill has to be 5e, right? Yep. Yeah, okay, and I understand that. The, I've done 5e products, but my deal was, I. I name the monsters and then they fill out the stats because yeah. I don't want to deal with the stats for 5e. They're too long. They're too yucky. I don't like them. So yeah, anyway, yeah, I do it. If they, if they met my price, no problem. I'm, okay. I'm a freelancer and that's how I make my money. Very In fact, I just finished today. I just finished a dragon scale um, adventure number two in a, in a series of eight adventures. Dragon Skills is my fantasy world, and it uses a deck of cards instead of dice. Mm -hmm. and, oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, the fun part is, okay, so you have a deck of cards, and if you draw, if you want to hit something, you must draw a heart or a diamond. And if you draw a heart, it does full damage. If you draw a diamond, it does half damage. Um, but if you draw a club and a spade, you don't, nothing happens. Mm. So that's, and you, and you go up in levels, we call them ranks. So when you're second rank, you get to draw two cards to try to hit something. And we go up to five or six ranks. So you can draw up to six cards to try to hit something. So Very it's just, cool. a, it's a, it's a fun idea. I, I love it a lot. I write a lot of product for it. Um, you can, you can see that on firesidecreations.com. Um, that's where they sell my stuff. Okay. And I did a science fiction version called 77 Lost Worlds, and then I did Dragon Scales, which is the fantasy version. Excellent. I think so. Yeah. It's good. I'm, to, a, it, tad, I'm a tad biased, though. Yeah, it's good to see. It's good <laughs> to see you still pumping out content. That's what's so fantastic. Oh, yeah. I yeah, know I do a yeah. lot. I, I, love, I love my work. I love writing every single day, and it's just very enjoyable. And, and lots of companies come to me and say, hey, please do some stuff for us. And then, then I tell them my prices, and half the companies go away. <laughs> I'm yeah, glad well, to see that, Troll Lord hangs happens. in there. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> Troll, Stephen Chenault loves my stuff. I'm doing, I'm doing a pathing book right now, a pick a path book for Troll Lords. It's beautiful. Cool. That, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of fun to do. Yeah, but that's what happens when you're freelancing. I, I have the, for me, it's usually, well, money sometimes, but not that much. It's usually because I have demands on, on, on all the information I need in order to do a map. So, sure. so that's the yeah. Now, now, it seems like most other publishers, but it, it goes haywire for for other reasons than money. But money is sometimes part of it. But it's usually time frame. That's the the big thing. I demand way too much and and too much time to to work on something. I understand that. I, what, yeah. One of my one of the sales guys I used to work with, Jack Morrissey. He said you can have it quick, and cheap, and yeah. good, but you can only have two of those. Exactly. You can't have all three. <laughs> yep. And, and for me, I I, I, don't, I I compromise. I can compromise on money. I and, and if they give me more time, I can actually reduce my fee. Mm -hmm. But but time is usually they they are way too quick. They they're talking three four weeks, sometimes a month. And yeah, and like I, that. I always make them. Yeah. yeah. I always make them pay through the nose for that. Yeah, you want and, it that and, quick, then you have to pay me. Yeah, and and that's <laughs> advice I can give to publishers, especially in the when it comes to cartographers. You need to be out a year ahead and yes, talk to me and, yes. and and some of the several of the other cartographers that I know. We work in in a couple of years from now. Uh -huh, sure. Yeah, so 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 you can't come and say, "Oh, I need something next month," <laughs> <laughs> and think that 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 
yeah, I'm, I'm not starving that much. So, so. Ah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So, Jim, uh, how did the Twitch broadcasting come about? Could you tell yeah. that story? That's a recent story. Okay. Yeah. All right. First of all, I know nothing about Twitch. Mm -hmm. But Walt Robillard knows everything about Twitch. Okay. So I started playing this fun game with these, these guys from California. They, they do the Galaxy Edge novels. Really a fun group. Has a great Facebook website, has a great YouTube website, has a great regular website. And they've done nine Galaxy Edge novels. Very famous, great sales. So they started out by wanting to play Metamorphosis Alpha. And I said, sure, I can do that easily. So the group started playing Metamorphosis Alpha and went very well. But then Nick Cole, he's, he's kind of the, the head of that group. Um, Jason, Jason is uh, the head business manager, but uh, Nick, Nick kind of does the color stuff. And anyway, he said, Jim, you know, I, I really was sorry that I never got to play in Gary Gygax's game. Could you possibly put together a game that was just like Gary Gygax's Greyhawk City and Greyhawk Dungeon? I said, no problem. I could do that easily. Um, because, you know, I, I have 40 years I played in Gary's game. So I was on every single level. I, I saw a lot of his tricks and traps. And so what I did was I've now put together eight levels that are much like Gary's levels, same kind of features, and uh, a Greyhawk castle and a Greyhawk city. And so they are, they call it uh, the Science Fiction Writers Guild of America. And every Friday at noon, noon, no, every Friday at 1230 California time, Pacific Standard Time, California time, we play in the Greyhawk Dungeon. They started out as third level characters. Some of them have gone up to fourth. Um, I've only been able to, actually, I, I have a saying about role playing. I never kill characters. <laughs> Players kill characters. <laughs> <laughs> and so they've only had one character die in, in three or four adventures, but Walt sets it up so that there's a Twitch a Twitch, what do you call that, Jay? A, what, a live stream or? A... Yeah, live stream, there we go. He sets it up so that you can see it on Friday, but you can also go back to it on yeah. my Facebook page and on YouTube and, and see it. And part of it is they want to attract people to the Galaxy Edge group. Um, group. Okay. Which, which they are, they're, they're attracting them by bunches now. Great. Um, which is fine. And plus I'm having the fun of making a Gary dungeon and I, I'm trying to think of ways and maybe I've already said this, but I'm trying to think of ways okay. where I can produce this as a product and not get sued into the stone age by Hasbro. <laughs> Carlos has got it down. So, and you know, Carlos Lysing uh, fairly mm -hmm. well. And Carlos is, is the tricks of the trade guy there for, uh, All right. for that. Maybe, you know, I know, uh, um, but there's gotta be a way around it I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I get watched I get watched a ton by wizards and, well, I am, uh, and they, they really don't want me to yeah. do anything associated with the past um, which is, is kind of a bummer that's kind of a uh, I, that kind of is a little disheartening when you just yeah uh, this uh, a shame because you know all of us we have all been you know a lot of us here are, there's a lot of five years here which is great the community's welcoming for everyone for Greyhawk but uh, I'm an old schooler. Dennis is an old schooler. Carlos There's is an old schooler. A lot of nostalgia. I don't know why they don't see that. Yeah. Well, well, they see it, but they don't want me to make money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, the way I know that they see it is they they license Fantasy Grounds to do a two E. Uh huh. Uh, 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 in Fantasy Grounds. I think Goodman Games does a bunch of the uh, old product too. A mix. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. they also sell PDF versions of, of their old products on drive through and stuff too. So it's oh, still okay. out there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So there, it, you it, can you can still get this at, as PDF on drive through RPG. Isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah. we haven't talked about this in detail. Why don't we do that a little bit now? What do you think, Dennis? Because this is your better part. Right. Is that okay, Jim? We ask you some questions. Well, Eric, I'm I'm here to serve you. Guys. Oh <laughs> man. Um, yep. All right, so we have a rehash of all the Greyhawk deities in here, which is nice, along with their spheres for second edition spell for priests, which was good. Um, the, who did the additional spells? 
uh, reach deity. They had uh, that, that was a group. Okay. That was a group effort. Yeah. Okay. Because um, you know, again, three months. <laughs> that is yeah, insane. Like I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be saying that a lot. That, three months. <laughs> that that is. Yeah. Uh, so uh, to everyone out there, if you don't have this book in your Greyhawk, there's something wrong with you. Okay? <laughs> you need to get it. You, you need, do to, need get to get it. this book. Trust me on this. Yeah. You need to and get this book. I wish so, I got royalties on. it. Oh, uh, I wish you did yeah. too. I, yeah. But, uh, I just. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, who do you know who came up with the pack rat? No, that's not ringing any bells. Uh, I probably did. But... Oh, a camp rat. Sorry, camp yeah, rat. I think it's the camp, camp rat. rat. Yeah, yeah, camp rat. The camp the rat, which comes. Here's a picture of the camp rat. Yeah, it's one of the the the, the yeah, awesome, I, cute, I, cool I'm monsters. Sorry, in this I book. don't remember. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. For, yeah, forty years. <laughs> yeah, I Another... do remember. I do remember the Greyhawk dragon. I'm yeah, that's proud. in here. Is oh, that you? That is an awesome. Yeah, that is all me. Very proud of him. Ooh, wow. Cool. Yep, so that is, that is awesome. that's yep. so uh, Estrella, uh, everything beyond that, uh, every Greyhawk dragon, it was your idea. That is yeah, unbelievable. Absolutely. And wow. I, I sprinkle a lot of them in my Greyhawk city. I love when players try to get tough against a, against a Greyhawk yeah. dragon. <laughs> That, mm -hmm. that looks like a human, you know? Oh, that yeah. is brilliant. Yeah, I love really It's one of the most iconic, brilliant things that makes Greyhawk Greyhawk is the Greyhawk. Okay, Greyhawk. you're, you're going to give me a swelled head here, buddy. Oh, uh, no. Uh, no. That is, that Jim, is. Jim, uh, uh, yep. it, it is uh, definitely uh, uh, yep. worth it. How about the sword mount, the, the, the sword wraith? The, oh, uh, I, the, I'm pretty sure I did that one, too. I love the sword wraith. Love uh, the I've sword used wraith. them a lot. Yeah, love them. Love those. And, drown you. okay, tell me this is yours. Drowned ones. Sea zombies? I don't remember. I'm okay. sorry. All right, the drowned ones, are oh, um, okay. they're, they're yeah. animated by the roll. They can't be turned. Uh, yeah, okay. that's, that's not ringing any bells. Okay, okay. All righty. And you have some great stories in here. Yes. Uh, 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 Ren of the Stars got a big discussion in here. Now we know why. He's my boy. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Boy. He was in... Uh, uh, the Living City, too. Was he? Remember the Living City? Yeah. 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 I did the first adventure for the Living City. I'm proud to say. Wow. Okay, and that, and then the Living Greyhawk came after that, you know. Yeah. So yeah. that was a whole. It was a great life. idea, and and we we had many conventions where we had Living City, um, like parties where you'd come as your character, and I I was always the mayor of Greyhawk City. That was just lots of fun to do. Yeah. I, wow. That's... I think uh, I think this was also the first time that Jaron Crimea and his assistant were detailed. Was was it the ve the mage Tizzle of the veil? Veil the mage. I'm very sorry. Forty years. Okay, it's no problem. <laughs> it was only three months, so it was a quick. So, so was a lot of the material you remember was laying around, and you just had to, to kind of. No, nothing was laying around. It was all ah, made so you... whole cloth. Okay. We had we had yeah. several designers working on the project. Yeah. We worked their stuff. So you had loose ideas when you started the three months, and then you kind of plowed through it and and actually created them. In, in, exactly. Guys, that's cool. anything that, from that's your amazing. personal yeah. campaigns. Yeah, all, I always bring in elements for my personal campaign. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a great question, I'm sure. But you know what? I, like, like I said, it was an astounding time. We had yeah. three months, and I had to do all the art and all the maps within that three months time. So you know, mm -hmm. imagine giving an art order to somebody for five or six or seven or ten monsters, yeah. and not have the monsters even designed yet. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to do that all over the place there. So. The art yeah. isn't as good as it should be. And, and like I said, I'm really sorry I didn't get the play no, test. But for that. What I like in, in this book is that it, it ties on fairly well to, to earlier Greyhawk products. When it oh, comes yes. to art and stuff, it's something that all of this content could have been in the original Greyhawk Gazetteer or the, the, from the box set. Yes, I quite the layout agree. Layout and art and all that. It kind of ties very well into it. It had the mm -hmm. Greyhawk feel to oh, it. Oh, thank the, you very much. That's, the that's content a and very the presentation. Nice compliment. Yeah, I the really production. So, so, yeah. So, I, I actually appreciated it. I think some of the other products were, were produced differently and, and probably a bigger budget and so on. But, but for this project, I actually think that this format really suits enslaved. the content. Yeah. 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 Thank you. you we have Friend, you knew it wasn't realms. I'm sorry, what? 
you knew that it wasn't Crin Space or Crin and nothing wrong with the Forgotten Realms or, or Crin. No, 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 no but, but they, uh, they aren't Greyhawk. Yeah, aren't. but it's it's cool when you have a product that not only the content but actually the production and the aesthetics and and the presentation of it also yes. ties into the setting and previous products that I, were released like 10, 15 years earlier. So that, yeah. that was great. No, yeah. I, I agree. Uh, so we have a big question for Mark from Creative Mountain Games. You may know Mark from, he lives right outside uh, uh, Lake Geneva, I believe. So you may, okay. know, you may know Mark fairly well. Um, this is easily the cover, correct? Is Jeff this, Easley, yes. All uh, right. He asks, he wants to know uh, who, which, not who was the best, but Greyhawk artists, what artists had the feel for Greyhawk down that you, you thought? Mm -hmm. uh, without you don't want to bash anyone, but that's yeah. You know that's a tough question. I I would like to take the fifth on that. Okay, there you go, yeah. Mark. I try like yeah. asking who, yes. who, which of okay. your kids are. are the, but the, the, this is exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. People yes. ask me all the time, "What's your favorite product, Jim?" Yeah. You yeah. know, that's like saying all the other hundred are ugly kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This cover is wonderful. So oh, it a, is. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, a wonderful, it's, wonderful cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm Mark I, even the, the, <laughs> I even have the the poster when when I ordered a box of them mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. two. We got a poster that yeah. came with it. And, Jeff, and Jeff Easley is still doing amazing art now. Oh yeah, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. just, I met him at several conventions. Yes, and, and, yes. Yep. He's, mm -hmm. he's just yep. wonderful. Just yep. a, a very polite, wonderful artist. Yep. So one other thing about the book: the magic items all relate, and they all have names of locations or people or and that gives them a little the Greyhawk flavor, absolutely. That a lot of other magical items don't. I like in, I think I think we did that on purpose. Okay, okay. <laughs> which is which is another brilliant move. Like the collar of Tuzmet, you can't be decapitated while wearing it. You know, and it's just like cool. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. I want to know more. You know, I want to know yeah, more about it. Yeah. So, I, want, I want to find those Vorpal blades. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And that was another compilation of everyone, I'm assuming, correct? Yeah, I know it's we're going back so so long ago, but uh, okay, yeah, okay. Um, anything that sticks out in your mind about this that you're that, uh, as far as a memory goes, uh, besides the time frame, I know zero level just, you wanted to develop yeah, more, yeah, just that zero level character stuff. I'm just kind of uh, I'm still kind of sad that I didn't get to play test it at all. <laughs> was so, when the Free City of Greyhawk box set came out, were you involved with that, which was right before no, this, Dennis? I was, I was the boss in those days. Okay, so it was ah. you. The head of, but I didn't have any design work on them. Okay. But we can still blame you if there was something wrong with you. You may blame me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can. I'm sorry. I, I, I love it. But, no, right. but it's, it's, it's a fan. It's a great product. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dennis, what do you got there? Throw out one here while I get one. For You're really office. working Dennis hard. Well, uh, Dennis, uh, yeah. De yes, Dennis got great questions. I thought you said you had tons of questions all ready to go from people. We we do. I we do. I'm trying to spread out the wealth here. Okay, yeah. all right. But I do. I there's one one pet uh, uh, topic that I've always had, and everybody who's visited my website <laughs> knows that. Um, when this came out, one of the locations that really resonated with me was Tovag Baragu. And wow. so I think this is the first place that, that that appears. I think you created that here. And so Tovag became a real important key to my campaign, which has been going on long before even this <laughs> came out. But it's become a key part. And then, much to my delight, Tovag was then used in ways similar that I do for things like um, Vecna Lives. It was a major scene set at Tovag, and it's been used multiple times. Was Tovag you? Was, you know, would, do you remember anything from it? Uh, yeah, you know, I think I, I remember having to create some places that Gary purposely didn't create. And that, that was one of them. Yeah. We had lots of weird orders when we made that book because Gary wasn't there, wasn't right. popular with, with the management. And, uh, and so we- Well, we you had, were tainted. <laughs> yeah, we had weird constraints. And I, I felt kind of guilty about doing the whole thing, but 
you know, it was a dream project, even though I only had three months. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a general question from Notorious GMD. Uh, so when you rush stuff out, what percentage of, uh, of products would you say were not play tested due to short time requirements during that era besides this book? Was it a lot of them or was it? And, you know, we, we produced almost 100 products a year. Yeah. So, so I bet I bet at least 40 percent weren't play tested at all. OK. OK. Interesting. Uh, so notorious that hopefully that answers your question on on uh, uh, on that. Uh, so another question from uh, Lord Grendel Wolf, Grendel Wolf's Lair, Gitano. What else would you have liked to include uh, in addition? Was there anything else besides the zero level that you really would have liked to go an extra mile on? Oh, I would have liked to get all three. I would like to do more magic items, more spells, and yeah. more creatures. I would. I wish for more of those. Okay. We had time constraints and size constraints. Yeah. So uh, these kind of this book was uh, 128 pages. Is that about the target for for a book like this? Well, no, actually, the target is like 202 pages. Okay, so that it but, was just that rushed. Yeah, that rushed. Wow, okay. Exactly. All righty. We're lucky it was 128 pages. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my gosh, here's a bizarre question. Are you ready no, for this? really? <laughs> this is the most bizarre one I've heard tonight, Wally Hobbit. Back when you played in Gary's campaign in the good old days, what were the, some of the go-to snacks? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's that's a fair question. Chocolate cookies, M and M's, and um, Elise Gygax, his daughter, would make a delicious Ritz cracker with peanut butter and honey. Nice. That we, that we all loved. Oh my goodness, we I, I ate millions of those. Wow. Nice. Every once in a while, I bring over an extra pub pizza. Oh. Gotta have the snacks during the game or something, you know. I agree. I, I agree. I, absolutely. How many times a week were you getting together back then? Just, just once. Just once. Once a week. week. Okay. Okay. Gary, okay. Gary had a very active design schedule. Right. And even when he didn't work for TSR anymore, he did lots of design work. Yeah. Did you continue to game with him even after he left the company? You know, there was a period of time, unfortunately, um, when he left. He started a company called Tri-G. And oh my goodness, I wanted to work for Tri-G so bad. Yeah. Um, I would go over a couple times a week to just check things out. And, and I, I'd kind of hint, Gary, uh, can you use another designer? Yeah. But you know what? He never hired me. So, But he had other employees? Oh, yeah. Company? He had lots of Frank Mensa work there. And uh -huh. uh, yeah, Kim Mohan and um, a bunch of other guys. Um, but he never hired me, which which kind of puzzled me because I was such a Gary supporter at TSR. Um, but it just didn't happen. So we, we kind of fell apart. And then he, he wrote a couple of articles that were not complimentary about my products. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, I know, I know. So that kind of split us up further. But uh, the last two years of his life, we had reconciled and I was overplaying um, his game every week. That's wonderful. That that's yeah. that's so good to hear. So here here's another question that you may want to take the fifth on. Great. Who would you love to collaborate with now? If you could. Um Sophia Loren. <laughs> oh. Jeez, I didn't know she wrote gaming. <laughs> I, I didn't know I, she was the yeah. I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. You know, of the gamers, oh boy, that's a, that's a very hard question to answer. Yeah. I mean, the, the certainly uh, the, the boys I work with, Stephen Lee over at uh, FiresideCreations.com okay. and uh, Stephen Chenault at Trollord Games. There you yeah. go. Good. And, uh, and Joseph Goodman at Goodman Games. All those guys are wonderfully talented people, and I, and I would love to work on product with them. Okay. So they're, yeah. they're nice to get along with. We have very similar interests. We have very similar styles, um, so certainly then. But but if I had to pick, I'd pick an attractive woman every time. <laughs> Man <laughs> after my own heart there. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> that's awesome. Life is too short. I'm 69 years old. I'm on the back end of the curve. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you ever given any thought with uh, Lisa Stevens, Eric Mona over at uh, Paizo? 
pathway no, stuff? No, no, we Lisa Stevens and I do not get along. Oh, okay. uh oh, that's not good to hear. Yeah, not good to hear. No, we we had a few falling outs um, when they just started out um, with their own company. Right. And so we uh, see what I had to do in in my my middle years at TSR, I had to go around at the beginning of Gen Con and look at every single booth and make sure they were doing legal material. Hmm. And uh, we we had a problem with her company that really irritated her. And then Peter Atkinson at Wizards of the Coast did, uh, what was the name of that book? I can never remember the name of the book. He did a role-playing product. I wanna say Divine Awe, Primal Order, Primal Order. It was called Primal Order and in the middle, the two pages in the middle, it showed you how to play AD and D with the primal order rules. Ooh. And naturally he didn't ask permission. He was making money on our copyright. So I had to go to him and say, Peter, you may not sell any of these at Gen Con and we're gonna give you a cease and desist letter. And he got real snooty with me. He said, well, what happens if I do? And I had to tell him we would sue you into the stone age. And so two years later, he buys TSR. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, he doesn't like me very much and that's all right. I, I can live with that. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm glad, I'm really happy to hear you got stuff coming out with, with, uh, with Troller Games. Yeah. Do you have any, anything coming out with Goodman in the near future or, or. Um, uh, there's a tournament module. He did a Kickstarter. I, I, so I'm obsessed with Tomb of Horrors. Okay. I'm upset with Tomb of Horrors because it is the greatest challenging adventure that's ever been written by anybody. It isn't that long. It, it has amazing features in it yeah. that have not been duplicated by other people. And so I want to do that. I want to do, and I've tried several times. There's a couple of Trolloid products out there that are deliberately vicious, deliberately hard to do. They aren't as good as Tomb of Horrors. Okay. So I said, okay, my one chance to make something as good as Tomb of Horrors is to make a Metamorphosis Alpha tournament adventure that's extremely deadly and that's still possible to win. So I did this tournament for Goodman Games and they had a very successful Kickstarter. The product's gonna come out next month. And we play tested it. I don't wanna say we play tested a good 20 times. and. I had TPKs, total party, excuse me, total party kills of the 20 times 19 I had TPKs. <laughs> but the 20th one got to the end, did what they were supposed to do, and got the starship back on course. Okay. So now what I'm thinking, so so now what, and I think, I think it's a science fiction version of Tomb of Horrors. So I've reconciled that I did something as good as Gary's even if I couldn't do it in fantasy. <laughs> that is, so, uh, so I'm I'm toying with the idea, seriously toying with the idea of doing a metamorphosis alpha where the ship gets to where it's supposed to go and uh, and starts unloading uh, against their will, mutants and passengers. I think there'd be an audience for it out yeah, there. Absolutely. So I mean, the face, the MA Facebook page is, is really good. And I get questions about MA all the time on my Facebook page. Beautiful. Yeah, you made a new version. Starship of Horrors. Yes. Um, you know, I, yeah. I have, actually, there's five different versions of MA out there. Um, but the one I just finished with Troll Lords that's coming out in November is called The Warden. And what it is, it's a detailed mapping book. There are 17 levels, a dome, and 16 um, in-between levels on the Starship Warden. And so we've completely mapped out all of those levels. And then we filled them with creatures, we filled them with technology, we filled them with new mutations. And so um, you can now grab this 680 page book and uh, you can wander the Warden. So yeah, it's it's it was a, I'm very proud of the product, yeah. and it comes out by Troll Lord Games. Yeah. Well, as I've said a couple times tonight, Troll Lord Games is kind enough to be giving away four, in effect, four giveaways of of Jim's great 
uh, publications from them. Uh, we're going to do that. In, we're going to do that drawing in about 10, 15 minutes. We'll, we'll, we'll see who the winners are. That sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, um, this has been just been great so far. I, I've learned so much. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the great so so far. Are you expecting? No, no. I mean, bad, no, bad. Jim. This it's is all uh, downhill now. The great yeah, really. <laughs> Jim, the Greyhawk Dragon is yours. That's just mind blowing, right? Thank you. I, That's fantastic. It is. I, I I never knew that, and uh, that is, uh, uh, and to know that a majority of all the mon uh, all the deities, demi human and monster deities, and deities and demi gods are yours as well. Look, there's my son that's waving high in the background. So, uh, it's, and what's the boy's name? His name is Shane. He has a six level fighter named Taborius. Right. Uh, uh, we played last Saturday. We have a Greyhawk Kids campaign. Two of my good friends and their sons play. Yes, they look awesome. at that. Yes. Do, does yeah. he have any good magic items? Uh, he has. Yes, he does. He has. Um, uh, we have. We have keen weaponry in ours. He has a plus two longsword keen, which crits on a nineteen or twenty instead of just a twenty. So cool. uh, Yes. Uh, he's a he's a uh, a dual wielding uh, uh, straight fighter. So let me uh, let me give you my 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 concept on magic items. Let's okay? hear it. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. I, I'm the original Monty Hall referee. Right? <laughs> I love putting lots of magic in the game. Good. I love putting lots of gold and gems in the game because I really like the expression on my players' faces when they get things like power stabs and, and rings of invisibility. I just love it. So, so oh. the time is 1976, and we would go over to Gary's house, and for the first hour or so, we would all practice being DMs because we all wanted to be DMs in those days. So Ernie had a game, I had a game. And so I, I was the DM that day and the, the players ran into two um, owl bears with these weird magical sashes on. And the sashes gave them martial arts power. <laughs> and unfortunately for me, Ernie's group was easily able to kill both of them. And then they picked up these sashes and they loved what the sashes did. <laughs> and so Gary was sitting listening to those and he shook his head. He, was, he wasn't pleased and said, Jim, you're a Monty Hall referee. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean by that? That's when it was coined? That's when Monty Hall was coined? That's when it was coined. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, you, yeah. He said, you give away too much stuff for the effort it takes for them to get it. So, 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 so and, just a follow, a quick follow up. How yeah. did you deal with the party that has too much stuff? Okay, did you take now the that's, prisoner and, that's, and rip no, it? No, yeah. that's very, very fair. Lots of ways to do it. Yeah. One, I'll tell you one of the ways that Gary did, but the way I do it is I, I just upscale everything. So, they have lots of swords, they have lots of this, lots of that. Gary would put these portals in his castle. You see a glowing portal. Ooh, I wonder what that is. Beyond the glowing portal is an amazing treasure of gold and silver and magic items. So we'd stupidly rush through the portal <laughs> and it would negate all our magic items. Poof. More they're than gone. Junction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See? Okay. And another thing, favorite thing of Gary's. So we, we'd have, we'd think we're really tough and we'd be on like the fourth level, and we're all sixth and seventh level characters, and we're beating the crap out of everything. And so Gary would put in a wizard and three clerics. And we'd see them, oh, wizard, three clerics, let's go kill them. And they would all throw whole persons at our party. <laughs> I don't feel bad now. <laughs> they, so what that would was, we, we'd all get hold. We would, we'd have two or three magic saves that we had to make, and it's really hard to make two or three. Oh, yeah. magic saves. And so we'd all be held. And so what those bad guys did is they stripped us naked and <laughs> they, they kicked us out of the dungeon because they wanted us to come back for revenge so they could do it again. <laughs> so, so people with, with lots of goodies, you either upscale your dungeon, which I had no problem doing, or, or you do these little tricks that, that gets rid of their magic and people, of course, violently angry when their magic disappears. That's why Ernie would keep a ring of wishes in his room at the inn. So if something like that would happen, he'd wish it undone. Wow. Gary That's didn't smart. Much, yeah, Gary You're didn't much like that. But Gary was always vicious about wishes. If you didn't say it exactly right, he would turn that wish against you in so many ways it wasn't even funny. We used to do 
four or five pages of qualifications <laughs> on our wish, <laughs> just to make sure that he couldn't, you know, really, really hurt us with it. So, yeah, that's what we do. We, you know, you kind of up the stakes, you strip it away. Um, we also had Gary, again, Gary was a genius. All right, so he had a tower in Greyhawk City, the Black Wizard's Tower. And we would get people cursed or we would get people turned to stone. And the only place to get that fixed was in the Black Wizard's Tower. <laughs> and the, the Black Wizard demanded magic items to do his fixing. So if you wanted to get unstoned, we had to drag the statue there <laughs> and we had to give him, you know, a couple of our best magic items for him to do the thing. Yep. So I became very popular the day I was able to do flesh to st or stone to flesh. <laughs> yeah, the black wizard, he, he, he was one of the siphoners of magic items because that's all he would take. Wouldn't take gold, didn't care. Wouldn't take gems, didn't care. Yeah. He wanted magic items. So it sucked him out of the game. I love where that I know where Monty Hall was coined now. <laughs> yep, yep. I do. I mean, because yep. it's like it's it was a term we used in the eighty. It's a term yeah. uh, articles yeah. about it. I mean, it's a uh, oh, yeah. wow. I treat it as a badge of honor. I would. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> that is that is yep. uh, that was such such wonderful story. I take I take the most that. I take the most hit from Wizards of the Coast for my Monty Hall style of gaming. <laughs> you know, yeah, I just it's a fantasy game. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun, exactly right. Yeah. And so yeah. oh yeah, let's let's have a plus one sword be like the most powerful sword in our whole game. Give me a break. Yeah. You know one of the early sets of adventures that the our campaign went through was the giant and then drow series. And oh sure. By the time you come out of that, the the items that the party had was just incredible. It was so yeah. much. Yeah. You know, again, the size of the that, that Gary is a bad guy. You know why he's a bad guy? Because he started doing cursed items. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. That, so that I, get this, the... I get this Horn of Valhalla. Oh, what a wonderful magic item. I blow it, and Vikings come out and fight for me. Isn't that wonderful? And then I find this other horn. Oh, wow, another horn. I blow it, and bubbles come out and smother me. <laughs> you know, or or with the drow. Okay, so we go down and we fight the drow. They're tremendously powerful. We escape barely with our lives, but we have all this wonderful stuff: drow boots, drow shields, drow swords. Come and to find out, they see the light. And they they see the light exactly right, <laughs> and they and they go bad. So yeah. really sad to, to just have the grand stuff for a few adventures, and then it's gone. And that was Gary's mentality. He did that kind of stuff all the time. And, you know, yeah. of course, he had to play these, play test these things. You know, Gary was, I know he he or Wizards would never admit it, but Gary was a Monty Hall judge too. And why was he a Monty Hall judge? Because he had hundreds of magic items and hundreds of spells that he had to get play tested to see if they would ruin his game. Yeah, so he had to hand he out had, lots of yeah. it. And, and, That's yeah. right. He had to fill his, his dungeon. And, and yeah. actually, the, the elf... There's, there's two tubes. There's an elf tube uh, of ruins in Greyhawk Dungeon, and there's a dwarf tube. And the elf tube is just filled with fun magic items. And the dwarf tube is just filled with fun gold and jewels. And then there's the center castle. Um, and, uh, and so that's what that's my group on Fridays is experiencing right now. They've been playing with the elf tube, and they've done very well. They haven't died too much at all. But they're just so kind the of scratched the surface. The Greyhawk ruins. The, the yes. Published exactly. Greyhawk ruins. Exactly. Well, yeah. Very yeah I cool. didn't like. I didn't like the Greyhawk castle. They, it was too much tongue in cheek for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I got a couple I'm questions sure. from the audience. So as we okay, what wind, a great idea. Let's do that. As we wind down, uh, so Grape Ape Texas asks, uh, "Do you have a most prized personal RPG possession that you have?" Ooh, interesting question. A most prized. RPG possession. Yep, I see that pull of radiance uh, poster in the background. Poster, there. yeah, I love that, but I wouldn't call it the most prized thing. I think uh, I'm looking around. <laughs> uh, I think the answer is no. Okay, you you, you cherish them all. <laughs> you don't have a most prized. <laughs> I don't have a most prized. No. Okay. I don't, I don't have that many. 
I don't have that many Gary possessions, which really irritates me. But okay, this one's a long question, and uh, I, I um so uh, Canadian Ancient Gamer asks. Any input with the Marmorial Tomb campaign started by Ernie Gygax Jr.'s opening module for fancy tabletop RPGs in the Hobby Shop Dungeon series? Yeah, no, I didn't have anything to do with that. Okay. Ernie's Ernie's a very good designer. Okay. He's, he's not quite as good as his brother Luke, but they're both very good. They run games just like his their dad, so I really love them for that. Um, so they're really kind of you – know, and with, with Luke and the family – supporting Gary kind of every year. I really appreciate the fact that he's keeping Gary's name alive. You know, yeah, absolutely. You know, all the, all the young players now, the, the eight, nine and 10 year olds, they don't know who Gary Gygax is. So that's why I like to do stuff on Facebook. I talk about Gary all the time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and, and in so, detail, you have, you have lessons. I saw your lesson. <laughs> I've been numbers. doing lessons lately. Yes. Yeah. I have. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Um, See, I had something in my head, and it just went away. And I oh, hate, no. I, I hate when that, that happens. Don't... I have that effect on people. Oh. Usually, usually it's attractive women. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Anna, please, uh, while I'm trying to get this uh, question back in my head. I have that I one had to... question that is kind of sensitive to ask. So I think you might be need to pledge fifth on this one, but I just have to. <laughs> The, when when the the Greyhawk box set came out, that was mm -hmm. the, the uh, had a, a one version of the city of, of Greyhawk, and then yes. when Gary published uh, his book in in New Infinities, then he had a different version of of the city. Is there any meaning? Did the did Gary had a version that he wanted to publish during his time at TSR that didn't get published, and then what was the or was did he afterwards reconstruct it and make it into a revenge version for? Yeah, revenge? okay. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll give you this. I'll give you this double top secret piece of information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So Gary quoted a price to Brian and Kevin, the Blooms, on how much he wanted for the Greyhawk City. They never gave it to him ever. Uh, basically, the real Greyhawk City appears in a Trollord product of Gary's. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't remember the name of it. I should remember the name. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, oh, uh, duh, 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 duh. it isn't Gaxmore. It's Gax something. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's the true Greyhawk City and, and Greyhawk, the top levels of the Greyhawk dungeon. Okay. So, so, but what about the, the his books that he he published? Uh, the one, yeah, yeah, Yigsburg. Okay, the, yeah, and, yeah. So he couldn't call it Greyhawk because of legal ramifications, which is yeah. really sad, right. really sad. So he did Yigsburg, but Yigsburg wasn't. He he never wanted to reveal the true thing. He always yeah. wanted big bucks for the true thing. Yeah. Uh, but here you have the this one, this the city of hawks. He has yeah. An, 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 uh, here is it uh, comes with a map and 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 a whole bunch of details of the city uh -huh, and uh -huh. and it's kind of interesting because this one doesn't match the the TSR which is probably a lot of, of good reasons for for that to happen. I'm just wondering yes, exactly if, right. Yeah, exactly right. If there is you you can spill any any beans on 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 this. I'm kind of it. giving you the dirt that I want to give you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that's you right. creative director at the time when the city of Greyhawk box set came out. I think I, I, I think I was. I, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure I was the creative director. I wasn't the vice president of product yet. No, yeah. right. did you have any? Uh, contact with Carl Sargent at all during that time? Or? Sure, all the time. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, because a lot of his products were fantastic. Yeah, yeah no, he's a great writer. Yeah. I don't know. Is he still alive? No, he uh, passed away. Oh, he passed away passed? last year, I think it was. Okay. Yeah, yep. unfortunately. Yep. All the good gray up people are dying on us. Yeah. Well, it's part of the the age group, too. So. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. We had you and Leonard on at the same time tonight, and that is just... That's classic, yeah. right? Yeah. That, that's history, buddy. That's history, absolutely. This yeah. one is a really – oh, go ahead, Walt. Go ahead, Dennis. Go ahead. Jay can send, uh, Jim, um, uh, the URL for that page on my website. I had uh, – Rick Rose wrote a um, uh, yep. tribute article about working with Carl that uh, – New Year's holiday uh, when they wrote the book for um, the city of Greyhawk. Oh, okay. 
you wrote a really nice article about working personally with with Carl. Yeah, he was a very talented man. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, we hired it. we hired tons of talented people. Oh my goodness, yeah. the talent we attracted is unbelievable. Okay, are, are you ready for this one? Uh, are you are you uh what's a, a calligraphologist and can analyze handwriting? Are you ready for this? Here, Amy Amy sure. Crittenden asked this question. I have yeah. a, I have a handwritten letter from someone at TSR in 1980 or so, answering a question about the publishing rules. It's uh -huh. unsigned. <laughs> Oh, okay. So here's what happened. We would get, we would literally get hundreds of letters a week. Okay. All right. And we loved our consumers. So we said, we made a, a, a business decision to answer those letters. So what would happen is, and this is like the very first, I know Tim Cast and Gary used to take, what happens is you'd, you'd have a week of answering letters. So you'd take a bushel basket full of letters and you'd answer them and we'd mail them back to them. And so it, it's, it's almost impossible to tell who, who did what right. um, in answering the letters. But yeah. we did a pretty good job of, of getting back to people on, on the, the questions that they had. I had one question ever in the Dragon Magazine and it got answered. And that was um, you read, how much a legless gnome weighs. Because uh, we had a, a gnome got both his legs <laughs> cut off. They put him in the back of a backpack of a, lar a large human. And we, that, we wanted to know that. And it actually got answered in that answer the uh, uh, question section. So, yeah, if you answered that question, you answered a lot of them. So, yeah, uh, really. Yeah, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, all right. So I have one more big question here. This is Big Mac, uh, who is uh, from, uh, you probably know the Piazza. A huge, Shepherd, a, a huge. Yeah. Uh, yes, I know they don't like me very much. Uh, he loves you. He's on, been on it since the beginning tonight. So, uh, oh really? Yes. I'm glad somebody loves me. Yeah, he loves you. Oh, yes. I guarantee yeah. it. Uh, this is a spell jammer question. Ask okay. Jim if he knows any of the parts of Earth's planetary system were created before spell jammer. Did you invent that? Okay, I didn't do it. I didn't invent any of spell jammer. Jeff okay. Grubb put that together. It's a genius design. Okay. Oh my goodness, it's so wonderful. The yeah. idea of of sailing in space with your D and D AD and D characters That's is wonderful. to me just my mind is just wonderful. And plus, it links all the the campaigns together, yeah. which is what really was needed, you know. Yeah, and and we did it with the spell jammer product was terrific, and uh, it was fun to play with. I play tested all of them, every single one of them, and then just enjoyed enjoyed them tremendously. So Jim, in big in big bold letters, Big Mac just put the Piazza loves James Ward. <laughs> I would far be it for me to call him a liar. <laughs> and Cold Steel Penguin says fifty five pounds. That's probably what. Yeah, the, the, yeah, 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 yeah it probably great. was right in there. You probably yeah. got it right mm -hmm. from that. Yeah. So what a <laughs> what an unbelievable amount of questions. Thank you, yep. everyone. Uh, so to this yep. point, I don't, we don't want to we don't want to keep you too much longer than the two hour time. I know it's it's getting a little late for you. No, I'm but, good. You're good. Okay. All right. Let's let's talk yeah. about. And, Go just ahead, a second. Leonard sent an email saying they had a brown up. That's why he disappeared. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> tell me. Oh, he, okay. Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't Leonard again, just. So he, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You can send him back an email just saying, hey, if you want to come on for five minutes, uh, you're more than welcome to. Absolutely. Let's We're, make sure we talk to him if he comes on again. Uh, uh, well, no. Le Leonard, Leonard, is, uh, Leonard is the man. He comes on yep. and he. he inputs on every topic of discussion we have. Oh, neat. Yeah, for well, example, I feel, I felt guilty there. No, no. So uh, Leonard is Leonard's a, a fantastic, fantastic uh, yep. guest. Mm -hmm. I'm honored that he comes on twice a week. It's wonderful. yeah, you it's should fantastic. be absolutely yeah. honored that he comes on twice. He's a week. definitely a pillar. Like I said, I'm just a big stone. Oh, uh, he's uh, he's, he's a great guy too. We're getting a sense of humor out more and more too. If you notice, he's just mm -hmm. he's he's going through chemo now, but he is uh, he's he's a trooper and he's he's getting yep. a little more. He's getting more and more comfortable every week, yep. and he just loves the discussions and stuff and i actually real quick story jim i we had an argument about the earth arcana a couple weeks ago <laughs> yep, so awesome. uh, it was about the dream spell by illusionists mm -hmm. and so leonard i said hey you know you can use a dream spell to get back fingers and eyes and ears small things leonard gets the book open reads it goes this is like a limited wish this is bullshit right yeah. <laughs> and so i said gary wrote it 
Leonard, it's got to be uh, a doctrine, <laughs> man. Come on. Yeah. So, yeah. It had a nice little <laughs> was, uh, argument. Was, was awesome. I, think, I think Zeb Cook added a lot to that book, too. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. Uh, it's I... a great book. All that early stuff is great. So speaking yeah. of, we have Greyhawk Con coming up on, in October. We have 58 events. Uh, uh, I have uh, Luke participating in a game. I'm, I'm DMing. Eric Moan is pl uh, playing. Uh, Gary Hulian's playing. Anna's, Anna's got a, a seminar. Anna's playing in my game. Anna's playing in Tim's game. Carlos Lysing's doing stuff. The very last show of the of the con is on this time slot. We're here now, but it starts at 7. It's called Ask the Experts. And just a general questions and answer session. Right now, I have Malden, I have Alan Grow Dog, Alan Grow, I have Gary Hulian and Leonard Lakafka. So I wanted to ask if you wanted to be part of that. You know, I I have to say no. Okay. I when I get asked to do those kind of conventions, yeah, I saw probably fifty times a year. Okay. And so I have had to ask for performance fees. No problem. And people don't usually want to pay me a performance yeah, fee. I completely understand, but we wanted we wanted that. Okay, I no, I, pre I appreciate it, but it. like I said, I it's I have to get a performance fee to do it. Okay. I'm just I'm doing a big thing in October at the Greyhawk Museum on Lake Geneva. Oh, cool! Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. I where, saw. Where? The, yeah, it was so sad. I that when the con had to be canceled and turned vert. Virtuals. We Virtual. could, I couldn't go there because I would have. It would be such an honor and, and so much fun to to visit that. Well, hopefully yeah. you can do it next year, huh? Yeah, that's the. Yep, yeah, that's what I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. As much as the con, almost. Yeah. Yeah, uh, me, Josh uh, Gray, Greyhawk Convention. I just, I just love it. It just is no other experience like it. Just amazing. Josh Pop asked, uh, "Are you? Uh, there's a hobby store in Lake Geneva. Are you going to be DMing there?" Uh, uh, what there's was the name? Josh, put it back up, Geneva. please. There isn't a hobby store in Lake Geneva. He said that there was. Uh, I gotta find this. There's the Greyhawk Museum, but I don't think there's a hobby. Okay. Oh, there is a hobby store. Yes, yeah. it's Hobbyist? on. The, it's on. Yeah, it's on Hotel Road. Okay. And yeah. I I have DM there. Okay. Mark Clover is the proprietor there. Really good guy. He has yeah. mm -hmm. he has his own website, uh, Facebook page, and he does a, a podcast every week. He's on. He's on now. Yep. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. There we yeah. go. Yep. Yeah. And, Mark, uh, Mark CMG. That's Mark Clover. Okay. Yep. Yes. 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 And I have I have run games at his store lots. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. He's a good guy. Yeah. Mark is uh, uh, Mark is a friend of the show and uh, is uh, definitely a great guy. And he uh, he he is on Twitch um, uh, usually almost every morning and uh, runs a variety discussion show. So that really. That's oh yeah. Thing. Very intelligent man. Really knows his stuff. Really Absolutely. Well. Cool. So, uh, what would you, what would you like to say to everyone out there watching? We got roughly a hundred, yeah. over a hundred people watching right now. Is over a hundred people. Yeah, yeah. 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 One Absolutely. Two, Most yeah. of the show, it's been over a hundred. I'm, I'm really glad that Greyhawk still has a great fan base. You know, that makes me very happy because you know that's what Gary would have wanted, and uh, and Luke and and Ernie, his sons, are helping to keep that fan base going, and uh, and I like. I like the imaginative nature of Greyhawk. It's so free and open. You can do almost anything in it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I just think it's it's very good. Okay. Um, and you know, I enjoy I enjoy role playing. You know, I've heard people say, you know, if if you enjoy your work, it's not work. That's true. That's yeah. true. When it, you know, when something becomes so awful, you got to move on from it. You you know, it's. That's why uh, it's a beloved, cherished hobby for me. I don't want to turn this into a job. I want to just, I want to enjoy what I'm doing with it. And uh, you know, it's, sure. it's been such sure. a, such a pleasure. Uh, any, any last questions we have for, for Jim? We, I don't want to run him. Yes, please come back. Is what someone said. Uh, hopefully, that'll be, you know, yeah. uh, the case. I can make future. that happen. I yes. can make that happen. We'll that set is, up a date. That is great. And maybe I can, uh, we can keep Leonard on for a little bit more and have a. Maybe we could get someone like Tim Cask as well and have a, a great curmudgeon discussion at some point. Yeah. And, uh, if you, you and Tim have some things you could discuss, uh, that's a possibility. Tim has never been on the show. Uh, oh well, I, I like Tim. He works. He works very hard. He loves to talk. <laughs> yeah, he's great. yeah. He less pressure on us to come up with questions. Yeah, really, that's the truth. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, he, has, I he has a lot of great Gary stories, and you know, he did Dragon Magazine. That's what what yeah. a claim to fame that is. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, 
but I think uh, you have really put your thumb down on the the, the early history. Uh, you know, the books alone. Uh, you know, it's just uh, and everything and uh, uh, the first science fiction role playing game, basically, right? Yeah, first, and the first, first, and the first uh, uh, apocalyptic role playing game too. Yeah. Yeah. In Gamma World. Gamma World predates uh, Aftermath and predates all those other ones that came Absolutely, out afterwards. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah right. uh, Shadowrun predates all those, you know, all the ones that yeah. came out at that time. Um, there was one gentleman, Low505, who used to stream a Gamma World game. He hasn't really done it lately. Uh, mm -hmm. I used to love watching it, uh, but, um, you know, uh, that was uh, on Twitch. So uh, it was only one so of those. So Stephen Lee, he, he has Fireside Creations. And Okay, his game is 77 Lost Worlds, which is just a brilliant idea. We won't go into it now because it would take me 20 minutes. But, uh, but he, he has a science fiction game, and it's an apocalyptic game, and he still runs Gamma World every week because <laughs> he loves it so much. I think that's funny. Absolutely. Yeah. My, one of my best friends, Tim, who's just on now, he ran, he's run Gamma World for a long time. So, and does it with, he did it with his daughter. <laughs> there we go. That's terrific. So I'm let's uh, let's do the drawings, all right? Uh, is that okay with everyone? We'll do the drawings real quick, all right? What a so, great idea! Sound good, it sounds good. So that way, um, let me go and let me shut this thing down. We're gonna go to do Towers of Adventure. Remember, now we're gonna do a drawing. Uh, they're all gonna be codes to uh, and free shipping with the print copies. It's not gonna Ooh, cost neat. you anything. Yes, that's even better. All covered by Trollor Games. Uh, you know, they're a wonderful company. Absolutely. We're going to do Towers of Adventure first. I have my list here, and this is our subscriber drawing, which is uh, those that are wonderful enough to subscribe to this channel. And I'm using percentile dice. That tells you how many subscribe. Oh, I just dropped my other 10. I may oh, not no. be able to do it now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Where'd it go? Hold I on. I think you could just roll the one die twice, Ken. Oh, I'm yeah. going to have to. Oh, there it is. I can't believe I'm under the table doing a discussion here. There Neither we go. can your son behind no you. No way yes. you'll be able to convince I... me that you have a shortage of percentile dice over there. Well, remember, oh, I'm not it's... in my gaming room. I'm upstairs. Oh. So, yes, yeah. that is true. Um, we have to remember that? My, well, I'm up. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I have the, the it, game. It was, a sh it was a shot at sarcasm. It, I see. It was, it was funny. It, it did not work. No, <laughs> it, um, definitely. Uh, the, well, what he's also saying is I, I give away a lot of these dice, too, right? Is that what you're saying, Dennis? Sort these, of, yeah. These well, fumbling... that and, and I know what your dice collection looks like. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's insane. These dice fumble. I roll fumbles all the time with this 20-sided die there. Uh -huh. and uh, my You initial... know what's insane? What's insane is Gary Gygax's dice bag. That's what's insane. Went for, like, three grand. Oof. Just they're all dice. They're just old Hong Kong dice. Oh my god, I couldn't believe it. It could be uh, worse things, though, right? I, I suppose mean, I can't. I can't wait to die and see what my dice bag is going to go for. <laughs> I, I well, let's hope that doesn't happen anytime within the next twenty to thirty to forty years. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ready? First, first giveaway, first subscriber, and then I'm going to close out the drawing thing. Here, Are you uh, going to give the name? Absolutely. We're okay. gonna get, we're gonna give the direct name on everything here. Let me close. Let me go to. Let me go to my uh, handy dandy giveaway. There'll be four of them, and those entries are closed out. All right. So the first winner of the the Castles and Crusades print number twenty two. Now my eyes are terrible. Oh my gosh, Grendel Wolf's Lair. Katano wins that. Katano, you are like the luckiest person in the world. Katano, you win the. That print copy. Now let's Hooray, see. Hooray, you'll love it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see who wins the digital copy. All right. Okay. Digital so we copy. Can't, are we crossing his name off the list? Yes, now? we are. Uh, Gary Hulian, Pluffet Smedger just won <laughs> the. Yes. Gary Hulian. Yeah. Hoolian, Gary uh, just won the. Uh, these are all people who are still on watching. So uh, unbelievable. All right. Yes. So he's happy. He's happy. Now we go to the third. Maybe he's happy. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Gitano and then Gary Hulian. See, Gary, it, uh, it pays to uh, uh, the watch there. Absolutely. Yeah. Beneath the Dome. This is another subscriber. Uh, don't drop the die. I dropped it again. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. 
Like I said, roll one, die twice. I should. Uh, I should do that. And number 16, this is out of 100, everyone. Number 16. Oh, my gosh. Another, Praetors rejects Jimmy Duffy, but I don't think he's on. He needs to be on. Is Jimmy yeah. Duffy on, anyone? I haven't seen him in chat, I don't think so. he was on tonight, so I get to yeah. re-roll that because you got to okay. be on to win. He re- does not win. Oh, here's a re-roll. I, I rolled 16 again on the percentile. What is the odds? You did that not. I you swear, did not. I swear to God, Jim. I swear oh to my God. God. We rolled again. 44. 44. Okay. Uh, we. Wow. All righty. Um, that person oh. I doubt is on. Is Hootie Hoot on? I haven't seen Hootie Hoot either. Hootie Where Hoot. do they get these names? Oh, my goodness. You have to have a unique Twitch name of 45 million. Right? Yeah. Really? Yeah, you have to have a completely unique Twitch so, name. So James M. Ward wouldn't happen on Twitch. Uh, it, it may. Oh, I think it would. Yeah. It, 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 well, not for, you know, you never know what people Maybe you have now. some other, but might be, yeah. Okay. Be um, so, 76 was rolled. This person's on, and they're going to be very happy for the print copy. Scott Wiley Hobbit, you win. Ooh. All right. All right. Uh, Wiley Hobbit right. is on. I know he's on for a fact. Yeah. Wiley Hobbit. Oh, yeah. He just. Yeah, is the winner saw. of yeah. that. So, um, he's awesome. gonna be so happy. Yeah, uh, uh, definitely. Now, one days more. Of days of gaming. One more, and here we go. I didn't even know they did a PDF of this one. Yes, the PDF. Yep, there is a PDF of this one as well. Here we go. Final one. The winner is, and I know this person's on Lexfire Twenty Two. I know you're on. You just, uh, just chatted. So there you go. Um. All bum, four- bum, bum, bum. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. So we got print copy to Gatano, digital of the of, of the tower to uh, Gary, Wiley. Uh, by the way, everyone, give me your email addresses, please. If I don't have them, whisper them to me, and I will send these out tonight. Print copy, Wiley Hobbit, and Lex fire 22 you get the digital copy of those four so thank you all thank you troller games for such a wonderful giveaway with jim on tonight uh and to know that they're they're available still is, a, is, is an awesome thing so uh, uh why don't we uh finish up in closing here as uh, i know we're, we're way over time and i apologize jim, jim for that but thank you you so don't very have much. to apologize well you i don't just see me complaining well i love i love that you're such a trooper with this and uh yeah. you know and that uh the, the audience out here is like we're, we're almost up to 110 viewers right now so the audience up here is really excited about you is that a good today. number it's yeah it's a very good number absolutely it's a very good number for uh, for a show. Um, doesn't break the record all time, uh, mm-hmm. which Leonard held for eighteen months. Uh, wow. He did, and then uh, we had we had a um, we had a, a seminar during GaryCon about streaming, and we had a one hundred fifty seven average during. That. Oh yeah. yeah. So you know, I know you advertise a ton on this on this. Session. Absolutely, because uh, advertising is the way to get it, uh, the word out. Because believe it or not, uh, and you probably know this, p- most people don't read what's on there, right? You know, a yep. lot of, they they, re- they they skim over it, and so I really wanted, you know, if you were courteous enough to come on, I wanted to make sure that people came on and watched. So yeah, there's uh, there's a three times rule in marketing. They try to put the thing out three times yeah. in the same product. Yeah, um, at, at different times of the week. On television, com- yeah, it, it, they just want to get it out there because the first mm-hmm. or second time people don't notice. So what is Josh saying? It's all fixed now. Oh my gosh, that wasn't fixed, man. Uh, so uh, I would <laughs> never do a fixed uh, uh, selection. I know you're just kidding. So that Jim, Josh, yes, uh, you you may know Josh. Josh lives in the uh, in that area. Josh Pop, do you know Josh? Nope. Okay. Oh, uh, Josh, sorry. Josh is um, our technical creator, uh, assistant, and really hard worker behind getting the GreyhawkCon Discord up and getting GreyhawkCon all the no. fluff and the bells and whistles. Cool. Yeah, and he's done a fantastic job with it. Uh, we have some things that we think are a little groundbreaking with that. We have highlighted streams in there and all, so we're trying to make it as friendly as possible. That's nice. Yeah, yeah I just figured out Discord. Uh, well, uh, there are discords uh, available. If you ever want to hop onto one, let us know. Uh, there's one for Grailcon, there's one for Cannon Fire, there's one for Grailcon Line. If you ever want to join them, we can get you the Discord uh, links. Not a okay. problem. Okay. 
Absolutely. So what would you like to say in closing, uh, uh, Jim? Uh, All right. I'm really happy to be here. I, I, I appreciate the invitation. I love talking about Gary and, and Greyhawk and AD&D and telling, you know, Greyhawk and Gary stories. That's always fun for me because, you know, the guy was a genius. He was he was a da Vinci of his time. And uh, and it's, he still hasn't been equaled. Nobody has even I, I read tons of RPG material. No one's even come close. No one has even come close to what Gary did in 1974. So he, he was an amazing man. People who have got a hobby because of his creation. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, the computer, many industries can thank him. The computer yeah. gaming industry, you know, the paper mm -hmm. industry, lots of things can thank Gary. So I like talking about him. So that's, that's what I do. Yeah, I put him on my Facebook page all the time. We got one late question from Gary Julian, so I'm going to allow it here. Uh, Spellfire cards. Was that your... Uh... <laughs> Interesting story. There we go. Okay. Get one for the road here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Magic the Gathering comes out um, at, uh, I think it was Origins. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was at Origins. And I got three boxes. And it was terrible. The, the decks were not usable. The rules were an eight point type and they were awfully written. I mean, and everything changed. It got tons better when, when they started selling like crazy. But so I, I, went, I went to management, Lorraine Williams, and I said, we gotta do a collectible card game. We have all this great art. We have all this great um, text that we could do. And she says, no, no, Magic the Gathering is just a flash in the pan. It'll be done in six months. <laughs> And I said, Lorraine, no, that's not true at all. And so secretly behind management's back, Steve Winter and I and Mike Broll and one other guy, was it Zeb Cook? It might've been Zeb Cook. We started talking about collectible card games and playing Magic the Gathering to see what they were doing. And instantly we seized on the, the collectability aspect of it. Rare cards, uncommon cards, ultra rare cards. Cards with my, I'm on 44 Spellfire pictures, <laughs> Spellfire cards. And so finally, because all of the sales representatives across the United States says, wow, they're impacting our AD&D sales a lot. People, stores are buying cards instead of modules. So finally, I got Lorraine to grudgingly say, okay, put one together. You have four months. Four <laughs> months. Four months. With artwork I mean, and all, my God. Yeah, Wizards of, Wizards of the Coast took like over a year to design and play test their game. We had four months. Oh my gosh, Leonard's coming back on. Leonard's hey. coming back on. So uh, we had four months to do this work, and so it, we were the second collectible card game in the industry. Hi, Leonard. Hi again. I'm, Welcome back. Just checking in. We had a brownout. These Screwballs huh. down the street have got their air conditioner at 72 when it's 113 outside. Oh, my. So they, they took the whole block out. Oh, geez. So I just wanted to come back in to say I'm alive and well and I'm going to have dinner. Good. good. Okay. Good that sounds great. Thank you so very much for hopping back on, Leonard. Really appreciate yeah. it. Always yeah. good to see you. Yeah. There you go. So we got him for so attention. We, were, we yeah. were the second company to put in a card game. And we made $30 million in the first year. Oh, wow. $30 million. So the first set of cards didn't sell very well. And so I looked at it very closely and looked at what Wizards was doing. And one of the things, Wizard, the mistake that Wizard was making was you couldn't tell a rare card from an uncommon card from a common card. You didn't know. You didn't know what you, you couldn't tell. So I said to myself, what could we do so that everybody knows what our rare cards are? And so when the Ravenloft set of 250 cards came out, we did picture cards. We grabbed people from TSR, the, the workers, the designers and editors. We put them in costumes and we, we photographed them. And people loved the pictures and the Ravenloft set sold out. And then our first batches of cards sold out. And we sold tonnage 
of the expansions that we made because we were doing picture cards that you could tell what the rare cards were. And so the stores were able to pull those cards out of their packs and sell them for more money. Yeah. So it did really good. It did so good that when TSR got put up for sale, Wizards came over and snatched it right up and stopped printing Spellfire cards. Oh, so that much oh. one of the, the, uh, the things that got Wizard of the Coast to be really interested in TSR, yes, even yes. more than Diademi, maybe. I'm, I'm happy to say they still run Spellfire games at, uh, at, at Gen Con and in Germany. For some reason, people love Spellfire in Germany, and they do something very unusual in Germany. They do 500 card decks. We, we we put it, I think we put it at 60. We might put it at 40. But they do 500 card decks and they have a blast doing it. So what the heck, if you're having fun, it's all about fun as far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. Yeah. So so that's Spellfire. We made tons of money for two or three years. And then again, uh, then again, they ordered too many. So with this and with Dragon Dice. So we're, they're selling very well. They order too many. So they sell well still, but we have a ton in the warehouse. Right. And, you know, they have to be paid for and the, and the money isn't coming in on them. Yeah. So that's led to, you know, that led to some of the downfall of TSR. The last two years of TSR, um, we made more money than we ever made before. We had two $40 million years. And still know. that wasn't enough. And it wasn't even close to enough, which is just so tragic. It's yeah. just... Just bad management all the way. I, I, I look back at that often, and I, I only did one thing wrong that was really wrong. I didn't get the 8, 9, and 10-year-olds involved. I should have done a simple D&D &D that an 8-year-old could pick it up and play it instantly by just reading. Yeah, some sort um, of beginner. Yeah, yeah a beginner's box set. version or something. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. I yeah. should have done that. But instead... What those eight, nine, and ten-year-olds did, they gravitated to Magic the Gathering. You know, they, they spent all their money there. So that was the mistake I made. So I did a lot of things right, but that was, that was a big... It was big, something you missed doing, so to speak. Yes, Not, exactly. You did something wrong, but it was something that you should have done that you yes, didn't Yes, ex exactly. Yeah. I should have known better. Well, it was... Yeah, we all do mistakes, yeah. We do, I guess. And we with do. 2020 vision hindsight, that it's easy to, to see the... Exactly. What you exactly. should have done, yeah. Yeah, I didn't come to that realization until after I left TSR. Yeah. So that's me, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, it was awesome. It's Janice, been, what do you... Uh, you have anything in closing yeah. uh, for Jim or to co comment about the session here? It's been brilliant. No, it's I been wonderful. I, it, it was interesting. It was... Uh, Learned a lot about the old days. Some things that I'd been wondering about for, um, well, forty years. Yeah. Forty years <laughs> since, for me as well. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, no, it was great. Thanks, thanks for coming on for sure. Thank you, I appreciate it very much. Yeah, it's nice being I, asked. And now I know that I can honorarily run a, a Monty Hall game and know that <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, yep. exactly. Yep. Now, now, are all three of you my Facebook friends? I know uh, I am. I think I so. I'm, I, I, may not I have to check. Okay, if not, be... I will be. I will be tonight. All right, that's very yep. good. That's what I wanted to hear. I, I gladly have you guys. You know, I, uh, I post a lot. Yes, of... we are Facebook friends. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that. We have I post been a lot of time. things, yep. and uh, and the evil people out there, the trolls, come in and bombard me with ugliness. Oh. So what I've had to do is only post to my friends, my Facebook friends. Yeah, and, I liked a lot of the, the stories. It's a, been it's a great yeah. book. It's a great uh, great group of people, and mm -hmm. they're very enthusiastic, and I like them yeah. a lot. So. Yeah, we've said hi at, at GaryCon a couple of years ago. So oh, okay, said, but good. That was with Wolfgang Bauer and a whole bunch of other oh, people. Oh, sure. So I was just yeah. one in the, uh, in the whole abundance. Another, the another very talented TSR person. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I worked with him a lot at Cobalt Press. So, yeah. Oh, all right, neat. Yep. Mm -hmm. One That's... quick last question from me. Yeah, sure. You say that now. So, uh, if when Gary Khan is in per uh, when when Gary Khan is in person again in March, will you be DMing there? I will absolutely run a game every day. And uh, so I better get uh, I better get a platinum badge to get into one of those. It's, is what it's you're saying. hard to get in my games. I'm very sorry to say. That's okay. It's on me. They usually to try. always overflowing. You know, I, I have to tell you, it's so odd. I have the most 
people that sign up for watching my games of any other referee in, uh, at the convention. I don't know why people love, and the place fills up. They're standing room only in my room. It's awesome. So people want to watch my game, which I don't get at all. But uh, it, it's fun. I love running games. And and people, I, you know, I do a lot of total party kills. But, uh -huh. but I, I warn them. I, I warn <laughs> them that I have a difficult game and you have to be careful. So uh, one, one more quick story. I'm running Metamorphosis Alpha. And I warned them in the beginning, lots of monsters here. You must be cautious. So they, they start playing. And four minutes into the game, two great big mutants start running towards them. And they get terrified. Where can we run? Where can we hide? And I tell them, well, there's a big warehouse you know, over, over to your right. I bet you can get there before the monsters get to you. So all six of them run into the warehouse without checking a thing. And there was five huge amoeba monsters above the door. And the amoeba tentacles came down, wrapped up the characters, and I had a total party kill in 10 minutes. <laughs> well, let's roll up new characters. I, I told them to be careful. No, I can never do that, unfortunately. <laughs> I told them to be careful, um, but they, they did not listen. <sighs> you gotta be careful. I learned that in Gary's game. You know, Gary, Gary would do horrible things to us. Uh, in the beginning, tons of things would fall from the ceiling. Lurkers would fall. Um, I don't remember the creature that like is, looks like the ceiling and falls down on you. That's it's a lurker kind of, above. Lurker Wait. above. Okay. So <laughs> things would fall down. And I got really tired of that because it happened a lot. And so from then on, I said to Gary, Gary, I look. Before I went to er in every single new room, I would say, Gary, I'm looking up. I'm looking down. I'm looking all around. And then when Gary says, well, you can't see the ceiling, Jim, I would toss a continual light wand up so I could see the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, stuff didn't drop on us from above. You, just, you, you have to be careful. You just have to be careful. That's all there is. I know lots of people that when they go in the room and they see chests, they deliberately shoot an arrow in each of the chests <laughs> to make sure they aren't mimics. Yep. So who invented the mimic? Gary invented the mimic. Okay, yeah. Yep. It was a, it was a awesome. great idea. Gary yeah. did almost all the monsters in the monster manual. Mm -hmm. Didn't yep. Leonard say that was his most hated monster a couple weeks ago? Well, he could have. It is a hateful yeah, monster. And I thought he said that. I can't yeah, it's, mimics. it's kind of, yeah, but it's, it's one of the iconics with the Beholder yes. and a few others. The mimic yeah, sure. is one of the, the, the iconics. Yeah. It's really super nasty. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought, Carlos. That's exactly what I thought. And so I've, uh, seen great, I've seen great pieces of art of the mimic, too. It's really fun. Yeah, they're making some great miniatures too with them now. Yes, they are. Yeah, you know what I lot of you know what miniatures. I saw today for the first time is four characters in wheelchairs. <laughs> yes, I saw those on really? Facebook too. Those I, miniatures were I, I do, fantastic. They were. I, I'm in a wheelchair yeah. all the time, and so I love the idea. I'm going to have to get them and have to have paint them up. Yep. And I haven't painted in years and years and years. But just the, I mean, they can't do stairs. Yeah. They can't do lots of things. But who cares? They're they going to look great so, on the table yeah. when yeah. you put them out. So they just, looked so good. Yeah, they really just looked very good. They did one of each character class, I noticed. Yep. Frank from Nightheart Gaming says he's already purchased them. And no, so, there we go. See, yeah. I'm going to have to do that, too. Yep. I'm going to have to do that, too. Excellent. Ask, ask him how much he paid. Frank, how much were they? If you want to put that in chat, please, that would be great. <laughs> So, yes. uh, Anna, what are we having uh, for you? Shout out wise, what do you got uh, going on? I, the Atlas, I can uh, say that my, uh, the first milestone is done. So all the fifty area maps are done, and now oh, well done. That's website. fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. And and so, but there's a lot of things left to do. So first, I can report that the the index, thanks to Duane Costa, he's done an amazing work. He put all the names in in an index. And he's going to re refine it a bit and send out a, a fairly raw so we can spell test it or spell check and, and, and check the information right. And nice. Then put nice. it in there. So, so, and then I will do the covers, the political map, the overview map, and, and some of the other stuff that goes into it. So it will be over 100 pages oh, yeah. of, of Greyhawk. So, and yep. when's it coming out? It's coming out in October and it will be available JPEG PDFs and stuff. So you can take it to your local staples and then print. A, a so is, is that a wizard's product? 
no, it's it's just a fan product, so it will be available for free on uh, uh, online, and oh. then you can just uh, take your PDFs and, and print your own version. Anna will copy. link. I imagine will link you to yep. the Flanish mm -hmm. Geographical Society <laughs> on her Facebook yeah. page. Mm -hmm. so you can be a, a become a I, part. I think I'm already linked to that. Actually. Okay, but, that's oh, yes, Anna's. Yep. You know, that's, you know yes. Anna, I, I would think Wizard would love to print that product. I uh, I'm not sure. Well, they they were kind of inter interested to to right now. I don't think they will print a, a, a Greyhawk product, but they they've actually I've been to to their headquarters and I've been on Dragon Talk with with uh, Wolfgang and it, it was uh -huh. a lot of fun. So so I got some few perks and and stuff for it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. And he gave Very me a, a, a given me a. a now a, a job, so to speak. So now I'm yeah, a professional. Yeah, there we go. You, you, you yeah, gotta love that. Photographer. So yep. So I do a lot of stuff. And thanks to my patron, I can I can do uh, part time Greyhawk stuff, so to speak, and really. Oh, it. nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Glad to hear it. Very uh, glad well, to thank hear you. it. Thank yeah. you. Anna is uh, such a wonderful asset and great person for the community. I mean, she does. She's uh, very giving of her time, and uh, you know, um, it would be. Uh, I wouldn't be right here today for wasn't for what Anna has uh, assisted me with. I mean, it's just no. that simple, you know? Me? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, that that's, um, goes both ways because it's a win-win for me to be here. It's yeah. a lot of fun and it's a chance to, to get my name and, and, and word out there a bit and, yeah. and babble about Greyhawk and, and I know how that is. Yeah. yeah. I like getting the word out. Yeah. So, so, uh, thank you so very much, Anna, for sharing all that. Last, so last night, Anna played in a wonderful game, if I may say, say so myself, the Living Greyhawk All Star oh, game. Yes. Uh, yep. it, and we had two new fun. players, and just, uh, I'll show one or two picks real quick. Uh, so here they are in the inn, all right, uh, the whole group there, and it was a fun time. Um, and they fought, they fought what's called the Fingers of Ayus, which is an aspiring, uh, priest who wants to get into Lesser Boneheart. This is out of Greyhawk. They had to go into Karen Hills. Um, and it was just a, it was a blast. And, uh, uh, we had, uh, Casey Brown and we had Jose Ortiz, Judy Rudolph, Andy McCullough, all these, uh, Anna, uh, I'm missing one person. Oh, and Susan Threadgo, all great X triads. It was a, a real fun night on a, a night. I normally don't stream on Saturday, but that, that was just a great, um, um, a great, great fun time. So, um, yeah. so Big Mac asked you another question from the Piazza. Would you ever consider Patreoning and doing a Patreon, Jim? Yeah. Uh, now, when you say Patreon, you mean having someone pay me to show them stuff? Uh, well, you could, yeah, it's kind it's, of, but it's you a, can make it however service. you want it to be. Yeah, yeah, it's a service on the internet, meaning you you can have, a, if you have a bunch of fans who wants to pay you a, a, an amount every month or for every project, they can sign up and, and then you work and, and do perks and stuff for, for, for your patrons and they pay you money every month. It's it's awesome. You know, yep. I, I've heard about it. Yep. Um, r right now, I, I'm working on so many projects yeah. that, I, I really don't know how I could do it, but it's, yeah, I, I definitely should consider it because I can yeah. certainly use the money. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a great way. If if you have a bunch of, of of fans and you want to regularly work on stuff, and 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 then they will be your 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 kind of the your fans that will be the closest to you that that you can ask. They they can tell you what they want to and, what and to do. And you give like them that. PDFs and things. You can do whatever. You, you can, some patrons Absent are simply nice. are simply Simply, they they just give meaning. I give away everything I do for free now. It's during the COVID. I don't before what I did was that I gave my patrons. A, a, they get to see it like a month before anyone else get to see it. But now, since the times are rough and some people might not have the chance to to give me any money anymore, and I must must accept that, so to speak. That's the reality we live in. So that's why I'm saying right now I give away everything right away as I'm doing it. But I'm it's it was, and it's extra wonderful that I have a few people that can that can so contribute money. But I Google yeah. Patreon.com to see it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yep. Uh, Anna and Carlos license or experts at it, I would you, I would pick their brains on uh, some yeah. suggestions mm -hmm. and ideas. Yeah. I think they'd yeah. both be great assets to you. Yeah, uh, to, is, yeah. yeah. We, we should uh, we should have that discussion because the the Kickstarters and Indiegogo that's a, that's a way of crowdfunding things. Patreon works a bit different, so it depends on what type of project. Some projects work much better to use crowdfunding like Kickstarter or Indiegogo yeah. or, or others, and some other type of projects and and ways of, of doing it might works much better with Patreon. Yeah, so I've done on, lots of Kickstarter stuff. Yeah. 
yeah. yeah, it depends on if you have like, if, if you have a, a product, meaning I want to do this module and then print it and send it away. That's perfect for Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. But if you just want to continue creating things for your fans, then Patreon might be a, a much better way to go. I have tons of things that nobody's ever seen. Exactly, that would be that's good. perfect. Would you be can pitch good that out on a monthly basis and 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 to your patrons. Whether first, it's MA or Gamma World or D and D, yep. you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't. Yeah, matter. don't do Gamma World anymore. Gamma World, of course, is owned by Hasbro oh, Corporation. Oh, yeah, but you oh, can do um, Metamorphosis Alpha. Yeah. Yes, I can. All I want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that Excellent. will be. There. You can run that, that as a patron if you want. That will be oh, kind of super cool. Yeah. Uh, I I Patreon three individuals. I Patreon Anna's. I Patreon Carlos. And I Patreon Gamescape 3D, my one of my sponsors. So, uh -huh. uh, and that's it. And I Patreon you too. So, there, so, uh, and there, a lot of people in chat have said they would do it too. So, it's something to consider down the road. Um, yep. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So, yeah, definitely. So, Wednesday night, we'll be back on again with our next Legends and Lore. Wednesday yep. night, uh, we're going to discuss the tropics of the Flannis. It'll be myself, Greyhawk, Mike, Anna. Um, and uh, I have asked Car uh, Carlos, if you're Carlos. available to discuss at Monoland, um, yep. uh, you're more than welcome to come on as well uh, to, to do uh, this area that rarely gets discussed. Uh, so we're going to talk about the tropics on Wednesday night's Legends and Lore. All righty. And then on uh, Thursday night, um, you're going to love the n name of this game. Um, we're going back to Heartbeat with our group. It, it's a true mystery is the name of the adventure, 887. The reason is because I haven't even started it yet. So I don't, <laughs> I am a little behind. I really prepared for gym tonight. So my Thursday night game, I haven't even started on yet. Uh, what I'm going to oh, run wow. on Thursday. So it's Myst a true. Mysteries are very hard to do in D&D, &D, I think. Yeah, it, it is, yeah. but it's a real mystery because I haven't started it yet. So uh, I'm going to <laughs> really, see. I'm really going to get uh, working on that. And then next week on uh, our, our, the show next week, um, we're going to go back to a, to a topic we did not finish the week before. Um, we're going to go back to Legendary Adventures of Greyhawk. Barring me not having another interviewee or another person to come on, um, uh, we're going to finish that topic that we really only got halfway through last Sunday. And Anna, have you ever got have you ever gotten Luke or, or Ernie on? All right, so uh, Luke Luke has not come on here as of yet. I've asked him. Uh, we've just had conflicts going back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, Luke yeah. is going to play in a game i am dming during virtual greyhawk con oh which nice is a great thing ernie and i have talked a couple times if you could uh, hey if you put a word out i would really appreciate it but we're well, putting that on my facebook page will help you a lot i will absolutely yeah. put you, I will, both awesome. those boys Thank come you. on every day and look at my stuff yeah i will have i will have this linked up when we're done tonight, I will link it right to your Facebook page on your front All right, right the, uh, that evening. It won't be Sounds a good. problem. Yeah. So that's what's going to be going on uh, coming up and then uh, – planning for all the conventions. I have uh, ReaperCon coming up with Labor Day weekend, then we have Greyhawk Con. Thank you everyone for such a wonderful evening. Jim, yeah. uh, I can't say uh, enough. Uh, this has been a, an absolute ple pleasure and honor to have you on. Tonight. Cool, my pleasure. Yeah. I, I was happy you invited me on. And uh, we'll Thank see you. you soon. We'll invite you back. Maybe we'll do a specific topic night or we'll talk about uh, Gary and we'll get uh, a, a reminiscent Gary show or something like that with some. Yeah, that of the, sounds good. I like that idea. Uh, that yeah. would be uh, that would be something for the future. So I have to ask you this. I keep sure. seeing this this moving image of this gorgeous blonde. Oh, you see? I, yeah, see? <laughs> oh, you got – all right. So that – you can do GIFs when people cheer, when people um, subscribe, when people follow the channel. It's a uh -huh. you know, signification. That person next door just cheered me 100 bits, which is a certain amount of – twitch coinage and then uh so and there's uh, here look he's doing it again for you so uh yeah. um, i can't tell you how much i appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> uh, i um th they are scenes from a tv show in the early two the mid 2000s legends of the seeker um that i liked and if it had two hot women in it so i i'm you and i are of the same thought process right so, yes, of uh, course, we can't use the term hot women anymore. Well, no, I just did. Can. I'm an old. Uh, uh, yes, I just did. I apologize if I offended. Look, he's doing it again. If there I offended anyone in the crowd, I apologize for using that term. But I like the TV show. So there yeah. you go. That's what you I tell that say. guy, whoever he is, that he needs to be on my Facebook page. Extort, you got a personal invite to uh, Jim's Facebook page. Uh, send, send him a friend request saying you are extort 4711.
Yeah, I'd love okay. that. All right, so um, excellent. Okay, and so I appreciate being coming on. I, I hope you guys got what you wanted. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Way more. Everyone did. The community great, did. Yeah. Great mm -hmm. questions. You ask great questions. I really Thank appreciate you. that. Yeah. So many times I get on these po podcasts and they, what's your favorite color, Jim? Oh. Um, <laughs> you know, how long have you been doing this, Jim? You know, what's your, what's your favorite product? Which is just exactly like saying, which one of your kids is your favorite? You know? Oh, my God. Can't do that. Yeah. We try and make it as, you know, detail oriented as possible. You did a good job. You Thank did a you. very good job. Thank you. All right. So we're going to read into Fabled 42 tonight. Um, and let me go. Now, normally I hit the wrong button here, Jim, uh, always. And Anna will tell you and Dennis will tell you. I usually go to the wrong scene here. But let me see if I can get to my proper exit scene by pressing this button. There we go. Look at that. We did it. Nice oval. Yeah, you like that? One of the fun things yeah, in Exploit yeah. you can program in there. Thank so you for watching uh, and participating in tonight's Gabin. Gabin, Gabin at Lord Peaks Haven, which is a bar in Tring Lee huh? uh, in my campaign, which if you can drink three of their special drink called the Trolls Piss, uh, you get on their wall of fame, and not a PC has ever done it successfully. I bet, yeah. I can't imagine drinking Troll Piss. Well, that's the name of it, so. <laughs> well, uh, I think, yeah. A bit much. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. You have a great night. You too. I'll be leaving now. Uh, I'll be posting, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. All right. Set up the raid into uh, Fable 42 here. They're running Lord of the Rings, which is cool. Starting it up. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Troller Games, for such a great, great, uh, generous um, giveaway for Jim. Um, and uh, let's see. 51 viewers. Are we ready? Raiding in with 51. A great number. Here we go. He's going to be happy. Chris Solo is going to be so happy. Everyone have a great night. We'll see you. See you soon. Adios.